This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast contains mature content, explicit language, suggestive situations, and partial to full frontal nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Don't let your kids listen to this. Spoiler alert, this movie fucking sucks. Uh, (laughs) Welcome to Cinephobe, Marshall. (laughs) Marshall, it's a slog, man. It is. Do you want to walk us through your selection process at all coming into Liam Neeson month? Well, I knew that you guys had picked Taken 2 and Taken 3. And when you go through Liam Neeson's eligible movies, you're like, all these are just variations of Taken. (laughs) So I was like, let me just do something that at least seems different, even though it's a franchise and he's not the main character. Oh, it was different. Kind of spice it up a little bit. Marshall Newhouse, Super Bowl champ, big guy. Are you a guy that's had to settle a lot of scores in your life, Marshall? Or people just look and they're like, no, I'm not. I'm not stupid. (laughs) I think being big is a deterrent for most of life. There's very few people who just want action when you're 6'4", 300. Yeah. That kind of stops a lot of stuff. I was a lot of bars doorman just because I looked big. And I was big because people, even if they're drunk, they look up at you. It stops a lot of arguments from happening. The flip side of that is, though, you had to have a mean face all the time, right? Like, you can't be the bouncer with the big, happy look on your face, right? That, that's kind of counterproductive. That would actually scare me more. Yeah, I don't think that's a deterrent. <laughs> if I was just walking around with a grin. Why is he so happy? Uh-oh. <laughs> this big guy is ready. What does he know? <laughs> yeah, what does he know? I found out in college that if I just wore a black shirt and, like, vaguely motion towards my ear, people thought that I was something <laughs> more important than I was. And kids would literally just give me their IDs at the front of clubs and bars. And so I'd do the whole thing like I was actually supposed to be working there when I wasn't working there. I rode with it. That's how Marshall's illustrious career as a scammer started. <laughs> that was the first NIL deal was him like, oh, sorry, it's going to be 20 tonight, fellas. Like, <laughs> just standing at the door of a place he doesn't work. I may or may not have installed some fake fronts, false fronts on ATMs. I'm just saying. Earlier this month, I reminded everybody that I used to sell, you know, fake parking passes at San Diego State. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the statute of limitations is up. Nope, sting operation. If it's not, <laughs> this is all shtick. You can't prove it. We all scam in college, right? I'll knock the hustle. No matter how long we're there. We were all in the era of, did you earn CDs and sell them in high school? I didn't have the capability until college, but I did try to in college. But again, LimeWire, man, you would get some real bad files on LimeWire <laughs> that were not what you were trying to get. Let me tell you something. There's no greater joy than thinking that you just downloaded an early copy of name a movie like Men in Black 2, for instance. Oh, man. And instead you find it's just gay porn. Like, oh, whoa, (laughs) not what I was looking for. Hey, speak for your own experience. Those are different (laughs) Men in Black. That happened with me and Vince Carter highlights. I was trying to get Vince Carter highlights. I was like, what is this? That's a different hole he's talking to. (laughs) What younger listeners are not going to catch on to is that it's not like, oh, I found it, download, and 10 minutes later, oh, that's not what I look for. Mm -mm. You might have to leave that shit overnight. Yeah. It could be a four or five hour download. There's like an anticipation. The best example of this of course, I actually, part of my way in college, paid my way through bootlegging. <laughs> we got him, boys. No. This sting operation is now been complete. It's all <laughs> shit. <laughs> I feel noir. Marshall, touch your ear for me real quick. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> you can go now. Yeah, not the yeah, We're swarming, now, we're now. swarming, yeah. I thought I had the R. Kelly, Jay-Z, best of both worlds. I got it. It was however long. I was like, cool. Hit play to start it. Just to hear, is it actually it or something else? And it was, I heard that best of both worlds. Oh, I was like, perfect. 
Now, I thought it was odd that it was like a 46-minute one track, but I was like, sometimes they don't cut it up. Sometimes it's all sure. just one track. Printed copies, sold a couple, got hit up by my boy. Hey, like, hey, man, what's up with this? I'm like, what? Oh, no. He's like, did you listen to it? Yeah, like, I, I gave it a listen real quick. He's like, did you listen to the whole thing? I said, no. <laughs> he said, listen to the whole thing. So I hit play, and it's best of both worlds. Oh, and then it just repeated that for 46 minutes. <laughs> but seamlessly, like, da 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 Best of 46 minutes of it. I've never been burnt so hard. That's including the gay porn instead of Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> that one got repurposed. <laughs> Marsha, do you think you would have been a good Man in Black in that universe, accepting what has been shown to you? Obviously, you're agile. You can handle yourself. Yeah, this movie got me calling back to the first one, which we all owe Will Smith a big apology. <laughs> you know, he's gone through some stuff mm -hmm. of his own doing, but what he brought to that first movie, I would have been a great man in black because I'm suspect of everybody. Y'all are weird as shit, walking around public, people watching. You're an alien. We got references to Elon, Donald Glover, and Kanye <laughs> West, all aliens for sure. Ariana Grande, yeah. I would love to shoot both noisy crickets and big ass guns. There's some people that annoy the shit out of me that I would have liked to neuralize for sure. Mm -hmm. I would have been a good agent for sure. I would have hated it. <laughs> One, you don't get to wear Oakleys. And two, I don't want to wear a suit all the time. I'm sure it's comfortable. That's one of my issues with John Wick. It's like, you always got to fight in a suit. There's just not a lot of range of motion. You've had a tailored suit before. It fits different. Yeah, it does fit different, but I'm a sweatpants kind of guy. Zach, you've never had a tailored suit. Right? Just... I have <laughs> one in my fucking closet. Bring it right now. Let's see how it fits. You want me to have us wait and I put a suit on? See the filibuster? <laughs> never mind. I got the answer I needed. It's not a filibuster. It's a fucking blue suit. Zach, if you had to tie a tie without watching a YouTube video right now, could you do it? Oh. I could tie a bow tie without watching a YouTube video. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Excuse me. I did that bow tie thing for a while. Thought it was cute. It wasn't. <laughs> but I learned. I learned. That was your fedora <laughs> phrase? Let me tell you, the first time I tried to learn how to tie a bow tie, that shit must have taken me 40 minutes. <laughs> I just could not figure it out. That was a tough one. Marshall, do you have a phase of poor wardrobe decisions? Oh, man. Yeah. I mean... I wore cargo shorts for longer than was necessary. <laughs> cargo <laughs> pants are now coming back, though, Marshall. Oh, I got so upset. This ironic recurrence of fashion trends is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Those things have never looked good. I don't care who you are. Guess what? I got a pair of pants from H&M. <laughs> oh, no. A new pair? A month ago. You might be on the back end. I think you're going out of style that quickly. <laughs> it's fine. That's... <laughs> It sounds like Zach's career is headed back to Oakley soon. <laughs> oh, God. You put me in an Oakley store again? It's over. It's another sting operation, Zach. Like, all right, we got him. He bought the cargo pants. <laughs> <laughs> but not only did I wear cargo shorts, some cargo pants, I used the pockets. I have room for stuff. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> I can carry some stuff. You get to use the box. Nah. I hate having sunglasses on my collar or on my head. I hate that shit. So I would put sunglasses in the cargo pocket. Dangerous game. You're telling me you worked at Oakley, but you didn't wear them behind your head, turned around upside down? I sold them to people that did that. You don't have to wear them that way. It's not a law. I kind of feel like it is a law. That Guy Fieri cosplay? <laughs> <laughs> Flavored down. <laughs> Marshall, do you regret picking this movie? <laughs> no, because as bad as it was, like I said, we could have just gotten another, no, 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 no. no, no. I'm going to kill everyone. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. To his credit, I did some research. He had like a tragic occurrence in his life. Yep. So he's just been making movies for the sake of making movies, and they just started looking the same. So could I be mildly disappointed by the same movie or very disappointed by Men in Black. Oh, what a spectacular disappointment it was. The marksman is really racist. <laughs> it's really racist. We watched the trailer. I'm like, oh, this is about to be racist as shit. It's not <laughs> quite as racist as the last Rambo where they're just like, Mexico's evil. But it's not that far from it. Zach, I thought you were going to say, it's not quite as racist as Liam Neeson in real life. Oh, well, yeah, there's also that. Yeah, we've gotten hit with that a couple of times. There was some comment about how he wanted to like fight a black guy or just find any black guy and find him or something. Yes. Whoa. Oh, I missed that. And then he went on Atlanta in season three at the canceled bar. You might have heard or read about my transgression. You know, what I said about what I wanted to do to a black guy. 
any black guy, one of them was a younger man in London. A friend of mine had been raped, and I acted out of anger. I look back now, and it honestly frightens me. I thought people knowing who I once was made clear who I am, who I've become. But with all that being said, I am sorry. I apologize if I hurt people. Well, between you and me, I still fuck with Taken. <laughs> Shit, man, look, it's good to know that you... It's good to know that you don't hate black people now, you know? What? No, 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 no. I can't stand the lot of you. Well, now I feel that way. Because you tried to ruin my career. <laughs> Didn't succeed, mind you. However, I'm sure one day I will get over it. But until then... We are mortal enemies. <laughs> I'll see you around, Vigla. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, man. But then you learn that you shouldn't say shit like that? Aye. But I also learned that the best and worst part about being white is we don't have to learn anything if you don't want to. So, I feel like the hatchet's been buried on that. Well, I was about to say, so we're good, but I don't think I get to make the call. I mean, are we good? <laughs> February is right around the corner, boys. Yeah. Oh, it sure is. Your picks have been horrible, man. It's the point. It's the point of the show. Is Isn't it? it? Isn't it? it? It's is possible. It? I don't understand what this podcast is about. Poppycock. It's a fuck house. Yeah, on a weekly basis, we are consuming more concentrated bad movies there's probably anybody in the history of mankind. Poppycock. What story? <laughs> what story? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you want lunch? I have yet to laugh in this movie. I'll just tell you that. You picked it, motherfucker. So. <laughs> <laughs> just remember that. You know the problem with Hollywood is? They make shit. Unbelievable, unremarkable shit. <laughs> So I was legitimately offended. You were offended? I was, I was offended. I didn't know you could get offended. I was offended. This did it. If I were gay, I wouldn't be offended. <laughs> They're fucking making shit up, I mean. Inconsequential detail after inconsequential yeah. detail after inconsequential detail. Please don't lie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm Here holding a mic in my hands and now I'm talking yeah, all so over. <laughs> Welcome to Cinephobe, the podcast we break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper, that's Amin El Hassan, that's Anthony Mays. Part of the Levitard Darden Friends Network for Metal Arc Media, Top of the Lark. We need some reviews. Guys, falling behind. We need a big push for reviews coming up. Zach's got to go back to Scotland otherwise. Yep, the podcast is over and I go to Scotland again. Deported. Oh, the deported. No, he's going <laughs> to... It's a conversation that didn't exist. 5,710 <laughs> ratings on Apple Podcasts. Review from to Anon General. New voting format. Since there's no more fan voting, having themed months is pointless. Hmm. Each week should just be picking whatever you want <laughs> instead of waiting for the movie to fit the theme. But love the show and we'll listen regardless. Hey, buddy. I thought your mom was pointless and then I, bit, I banged her. How about that? Hmm? <laughs> Why did you stutter? <laughs> what was the thing that May said the other day? There's no comedy in the world. <laughs> That's ever as great as when your, your friends, friends mispronounce it. Shit. Yeah, that's just you, except you can't take it. Whenever you fuck something up and the few times that we'll actually call you on it. What are you talking about? You're like, you guys do this all the time. The few times you guys do this shit all the time. What are you talking about? No, I promise we do it about 1% of the time you fuck something up. Fuck you. No, that's not true at all, man. Mace. That's, that's, that's not true. 
<laughs> Come on. That's just factually untrue. A mean will call it out about 95% of the time. And the only reason there's a 5% grace period is because he's not paying attention to other 5% of the time. This is true. But I do that because you do it to me 100% of the time. No, I do not. Name the last time that shit happened. Sounds like a mean's got a bad memory because he just forgot that he started it. Memory. And Zach got revenge. Mm. Like in Taken. Which one? No. What? This shit has been happening for, no. for, for decades of Cinephobe. No. I love that to me. No. <laughs> That's when you know he's back to Doug Corner. No, guys. <laughs> oh, man. If you have a submission, submit it. Just a reminder, though. Needs to be 40% or lower on the Rotten Tomatoes audience or critic score. January 2023. Happy New Year. Well, I guess it's the end of the month, so it's yeah, not a is, new year, new month, new theme. I don't approve. January 2023 has been Liam Neeson month. Amin tested our cognitive strength with memory. No. And I gave us some warm bagels with Taken 3. And then Maze gave us grenade echolocation with Taken 2. <laughs> gave us terrorism. <laughs> Just flat out terrorism. That's how I find all of my lost <laughs> items now. Fucking air tag. Grenades, baby. <laughs> now it's time for our special guest episode. Super Bowl champion, cinephobe consumer, Marshall Newhouse will join us with his pick of the 2019 action adventure comedy, Men in Black International. Science fiction action comedy. I don't like that. I don't like it. It's more of an adventure, you know? I think it's more sci fi than adventure. Actually, I wouldn't mind taking action out of that and going sci fi adventure comedy the other sci-fi action comedies are adventures of pluto nash r.i.p.d and suburban commando <laughs> what a real shit storm that category is i had a whole thing where i thought of all the connections to r.i.p.d and then remember that r.i.p.d just ripped off men in black oh yeah big time real full circle loop on that m-i-b-i stars repeat offender liam neeson whom you know from a million ways to die in the west Daddy's Home 2, Honest Thief, Battleship, Memory, Taken 3, and Taken 2. I wish I knew how to quit you. He's climbing, man. Eight-timer club. Tied with the bridge, Vegas, and Stallone. What a Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the bridge, <laughs> Vegas, Stallone, and Liam Neeson. At the time, Liam had The Commuter, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, and Widows in 2018. This movie, Cold Pursuit, Ordinary Love, and Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker in 2019. And then Made in Italy and Honest Thief in 2020. It also stars Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, and Kumail Nanjiani. Hemsworth is Thor, so he's from all those Thor movies and Avengers shit. Also Cabin in the Woods, Rush, and Ghostbusters. Not that Ghostbusters. Tessa was in the Creed franchise, Dear White People, and the Good Thor movies. Kumail, you know from Five Year Engagement, Sex Tape, Hot Tub Time Machine 2, The Big Sick, Eternals, and Silicon Valley. Just rewatched The Big Sick. Great movie. And Welcome to Chippendales, which is on right now. Oh, I got to check that out. I heard it's good. I just started that. It's pretty good. Rebecca Ferguson, Rafe Spall, and Emma Thompson in this movie. Rebecca is from Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Mission Impossible Fallout, and Dune. Use the voice. Rafe is from Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Green Street Hooligans, Prometheus, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The White Christmas episode of Black Mirror. There's a very odd trivia piece about him. Oh. He comments about the role he's playing, and I'm like, what? But we'll get to that, I guess, when the trivia is sacrosanct. Or I'll tell you right now. Fuck it. Here's a little spoiler. He says, like, oh, it's so refreshing to play a character that eats everybody and is genuinely a negative person. I'm like, is that the fuck you play in every movie? Yeah, that's kind of just what he is, right? That's who he was in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. He's acting like it's this big freeing moment. I'm like, what are you talking about, you fucking liar? I really thought of you with this quote. I mean, it's fun to play a character who's horrible to everyone all the time. It's quite freeing. We spend so much of our lives pretending to be nice, so it's great to not have to do that and get paid for it as well. I mean, it's a great quote, except for the fact that he does play a horrible person all the time every single movie yeah emma thompson you know from junior love actually and johnny english strikes again oh junior future cinephobe lately she's had late night cruella and matilda the musical <laughs> matilda. laurent and larry bourgeois 
Repeat offenders from Cats. I wish I knew how to quit you. French hip hop dance duo Les Twins. Oh my God, these motherfuckers. Kayvon Novak from What We Do in the Shadows. Nandor. Yo, I looked at him like, yo, this dude looks familiar, but I could not place him. Yeah, Nandor. Oh man. Nandor is also in Cruella and Paddington. Spencer Wilding, three time repeat offender from Jupiter Ascending and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. I wish I knew how to quit you. Repeat offender Sartaj Garwell from League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Man, repeat offender J.J. Abrams, who wrote Armageddon. Burn Calaco, repeat offender from Now You See Me 2. Repeat offender Rene Costa from Da Vinci Code. Mark Falvo, repeat offender from The Breakup, The Departed, Fred Claus, and Batman vs. Superman, Donna Justice Ultimate Edition. I wish I knew how to quit you. MIB International, directed by F. Gary, Gary Gray. Gray. That was a shocker for me. At the end of the movie, I was like, what? Directed Friday, set it off, The Negotiator, The Italian Job, Be Cool, Law Abiding Citizen, Straight Out of Compton, and Fate of the Furious. What an up and down ass career. Also some historic music videos. We have three writing credits, Matt Halloway. Wrote Iron Man, Punisher Warzone, Transformers Last Night, and Uncharted. Art Macrum, same stuff as Matt. That's his writing partner. And then Lowell Cunningham, who gets comic credit for all of the MIB franchise obs. Synopsis for MIB International. The men in black have always protected the Earth from the scum of the universe. In this new adventure, they tackle their biggest threat to date, a mole in the men in black organization. Oh, way to give it away. Yeah, I would say the biggest threat would be the hive or something that's not a spoiler. That's strange. I'd say it's the script. <laughs> that's funny. Tagline, the universe is expanding. Ugh. Oh, wait, I get it. Works on so many levels, yeah. Other tagline, the world's not going to save itself. It's true. $110 million estimated budget grossed $80 million U.S. and $253.8 million worldwide. They had $120 million estimated marketing tacked onto that. Damn. And they said that it would have needed to gross 230 to 300 in order to break even. Woo. So even though it made 253.9 and looks like a hit, I think it's a flop. Wow. Before we jump in this movie and you listen to the rest of this podcast, MIB International is available on Stars. Sure is. MIB International receives 23% from the critics on 322 reviews. So goddamn many. And let me tell you, the reviews were just as boring as this movie for the most part. <laughs> Spoiler alert. 66% from the audience on over 10,000 verified ratings. I mean... Check the positive were the negative reviews. How the hell did they get the 66%? Give me the positives. Hey, John, that's weird. That glass looks half full to me. Wow. Now that you mention it, it is half full. Cody Corral of Chicago Reader. Commander Cody. Hey, that's future callback. The recording that will happen in Previous the Previous callback. <laughs> timelines should i watch that show i don't care never mind <laughs> there are some jokes that don't land some and the tone can be unbalanced but overall <laughs> this is an enjoyable buddy cop film that takes its characters around the world they said some the same way frank isola said hang tough hang tough some okay, okay you gotta hang tough seven. then only se hang tough only seven yeah. starters in baseball don't allow it less than he to let you guys know there was one fucking line that i nearly failed right there amy nicholson of film week kpcc npr los angeles this is just a good quality second base summer blockbuster very big bold and funny a blowjob second base is a blowjob oh uh, no it's not <laughs> what? Base. What? The fuck are you? how did you have to brave the two of us finger blast no, no. that's like feeling up shirt stuff yeah yeah shirt stuff <laughs> third base is when you start finger blasting shirt stuff is between second and third i thought no, no. what you finger blast before, before you touch someone's <laughs> foot? Uh, yeah. what no that was a short stop joke <laughs> you said shirt stuff Sounds like shortstop. <laughs> oh, my God. So stupid. What an awful start to this episode we're having. You know what it is? It's the goddamn movie. The movie did it this is. to us. It is. It ruined us. Look, some jokes don't land, okay? Some. Michael A. Smith of Media Mics. This guy's showing up a lot lately. You picked the motherfucker. Like the other films, the two best things going are the chemistry between the leads and the amazing creature effects. Chemistry, huh? Yeah. There's something about that in the trivia as well. Something about that in my notes. 
Annie Banks of Cultured Vultures. I'm sensing a trend here, but go ahead. International is raucous fun, and the turbulence of it all adds to the over-eager charm. Although it may not be the most memorable piece of science fiction cinema and can be messy at times, it's also a lighthearted, feel-good buddy cop movie. Zach, since you're the one who does the reviews, and you see a bunch of them that you may not read, Mm -hmm. would you say that the positive reviews come from a certain... I don't know, younger demographic or eager to be supportive of certain themes espoused in the movie Mm. rather than give us their opinion about this actual piece of shit movie. Matter of fact, they seem to be acknowledging that it's a piece of shit movie, but don't want to shit on it because they're trying to curry favor, perhaps. I mean, there are a lot of reviews that way. I got that vibe. Is that Doc of Banksy? Pichache. Oh, is that the name of the island in Greek? Pichache. Noah Berlatsky of NBC News Think. What do you think, Noah? What do you know? This international reboot is inspired less by the 1990s than by the pre-1989 era of spy narratives. Going global in Men in Black International means going back to the Cold War. What? I don't know. (laughs) I was hoping you could explain that to me when I read it. What movie did you watch, sir? Tim Stevens of Comicsverse. As I have said elsewhere, this is a decent movie. However, it does feel a little empty at its core. See it at 115 on a hot Sunday afternoon or on a Tuesday night when they have the $5 tickets. There's no need to race out to see it right away. These are not positive reviews, ladies and gentlemen. Also, Tim Stevens, as I've said elsewhere, nobody gives a shit. This motherfucker act like, oh, no, he already said this. As you've heard me say elsewhere. <laughs> Tanya Lamb of Lola's Lamb Chops. Silence. I didn't hate it as much as everyone else. Don't go in looking for the Thompson-Hemsworth pairing in Thor Ragnarok, and you may be pleasantly surprised, but I'd leave the kids at home. That's interesting, because I kind of thought that it was a kid's movie. There's some language in there that surprised me, yeah. and I've seen it before. I remember literally one scene from this movie. So that you neuralize yourself. Wait for that joke in the reviews coming up, because it's a lot of them. <laughs> Matthew Rosa of Salon.com. Every so often, a movie gets so thoroughly shellacked by critics that when you see it, and realize it's actually quite good, you can't help but feel sorry for the filmmakers. No one's feeling sorry for anybody that made this movie. Jonathan W. Hickman of Daily Film Fix. Light, family-friendly entertainment. For those viewers still reeling and wiping away tears from their endgame experience, here's a movie with the aim to merely make you smile. And user Nabarian 4 out of 5 stars. As expected, (laughs) A-S-P-E-C-T-E-D. (laughs) <laughs> Tessa Thompson was terrific as usual. Chris Hemsworth served beautifully as the man hunk, as he always does. Story kept my attention. I felt entertained. Worth a watch. And it feels like there's still some life left in this franchise. No, no there's not. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way at all. They squeezed it all up. Even though they try to set up for the sequel at the end of this thing. The sequel to what? This movie or Back to the Future? Ah, uh, same note to <laughs> Future Callback. Here's a, a funny thing about all of this shit, right? Like, never mind. <laughs> Leave all this. <laughs> the Back to the Future thing threw me off, man. Negative reviews. Stop being a pessimist. This tank is not half full. It's half empty. Alan Almachar of the MacGuffin. It's the definition of nothingness. I wish it were a nothing movie. Damon Fudge of KCCI, Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pockets? <laughs> <laughs> MIBI is an okay summer science fiction adventure movie. Trouble is, it's not a good Men in Black movie. I'll ask this question at the end. RIPD or this? Sean Edwards of Fox 4 Kansas City. A Men in Black movie without Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones is like cereal without the milk. That wouldn't have saved this, though. Ryan Silverstein of Cinema 76. A failure on almost every creative level and utterly dead on arrival. And outside of Nanjiani's character, it isn't all that funny either. That motherfucker is not funny, man. Who, Kumel? Oh, fuck that dude, man. Oh, Kumel's hilarious. He's just not good in this movie. No. What? No, 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 no. Maze. I gotta disagree. Sean Mulvihill of FanboyNation.com. And Moma, hey, what was that? You guys ever seen The Man with Two Brains? Clip it, Maze. Who are you? Anne. And uh, Mel Mahay. You won't need your memory wiped after this one. The movie will do it for you. <laughs> Allison Rose of Flick Direct. I thought I'd get a clitoris joke out of you for Flick Direct. No. I have a healthy relationship what? with Sex Zach. Is that second base? <laughs> Just flicking it? Directly. That's third base rounding home. No, that's solidly third base. Tessa is good as the eager rookie, but unfortunately, 
Unlike in Thor Ragnarok, she and Hemsworth lack chemistry, making their partnership painful to watch. It is pretty weird and lazy that they just took a Thor franchise stars. I don't care that they did that. Just give them something. There's no banter. It's the opposite of banter, but they're trying to banter. Are they? It's bad banter. I think it is trying to be banter, though. Josh Larson of Larson on Film. Insert joke here about this being as forgettable as a neuralizer. <laughs> what a self-aware joke writer you are larson walter cha of film freak central <laughs> let me guess that guy trying to freak you with some lame line huh i'm not into that i do magic cha <laughs> mib4 makes no good decisions that's true aaron dicer of sift pop dicer she slicers she cuts it julian a movie so relentlessly mediocre predictable and bland that you may end up checking your text in the theater out of boredom with the added bonus of possibly getting kicked out. You may. Johnny Oleksinski of the New York Post. Do the voice. The actors would both make very nice Airbnb hosts, but you can't hang an action comedy on dreamy smiles. Why is he Scottish all of a sudden? <laughs> Back from the motherland. I'm all Scottish all the time. Yeah, but when we asked you to do a Scottish accent, you went into Australian. Oh, never mind. I'm getting my timelines mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a rough year for you. And then final review... User, it's bad. Two out of five stars. <laughs> it's bad. Don't bother. The it's bad guarantee. We will get everybody's first note and bring in Super Bowl champion Marshall Newhouse after these hopefully pre recorded messages. A listener, what's up? Zach Harper, coming to you live from just making my picks on Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. For my money, and your money, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Again, that's daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, including like pros and sharks, those people that really try to game the system and screw you over, you just pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Basketball's here, right? So check this out. This is the cool thing that... I love from prize picks. You can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports and leagues. So if you want to do like more Patrick Mahomes yards and less James Harden points, you can do that. You can do that combination. You can do any combination that they have on there. You just go to the specials league. You want to play alongside people. Maybe you don't want to go it alone. Maybe you want to play alongside people. You can go to, I don't know, Meek Mill, Andrew Schultz. You find them in the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. And best of all, Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games. If you have the player who exits the game in the first half and does not return the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks, the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So I'll tell you what you do. You go to prizepicks.com slash ding and use the promo code DING, D-I-N-G, for a first deposit match up to $100. Let me say that again for you. You go to prizepicks.com slash DING. You use the code DING, D-I-N-G, for a first deposit match up to $100 from our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I mean... What is your first note? Woke up at 5 a.m. to watch this piece of shit. Thank you, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> Maze, what's your first note? Is this a sequel, a spinoff, or a reboot? It's none of the original cast, but it's the same canon. Not true. Settle down, I mean. <laughs> it feels somewhere in between a sequel and a reboot. Like, they couldn't make up their mind. It felt more like a reboot. They could make up their mind, which was Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith said no. Said hell no. We're not doing this. Yes. <laughs> if the slap happens before this movie, do you think they get Will back into it? Ooh. No, because he's still making movies, man. No, wait. Look, there's a different echelon of movies. What? You don't think Emancipation is... On the same level as Men in Black International? I haven't seen it yet. It's on the list. <laughs> I do need more slavery movies in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall, do you have a first note? Are Tessa and Chris not funny? Or is Taika Waititi just 
that much better at what he does. Oh. <laughs> because Thor Ragnarok is the reason that people thought that they could work, right? Yeah. And they were pretty good in it together. But they suck together and individually in this movie. I don't get it. He should have just been Thor in this movie. Like Thor joins the men in black. Spoiler alert. Future <laughs> Kova. He was. <laughs> yeah. <at one> point. <laughs> they tried. Believe me, they wanted to. I think it is possible, but I do think Taika is funny enough to make other people funny. That's what it feels like to me. And Taika has a history of, let's go in another place. What's the movie about Hitler? Jojo Rabbit. Jojo the Rabbit has some irreverent, funny parts. And only very few people can make that somewhat laughable, even though it's a, it's a sad, crazy story. So it's got to be Taika, to me, having just the ability. What's crazy? Yeah, it takes some comedy cojones to play Hitler. Why is it made so happy right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was going to say, what's the movie? And I was going to say Green Lantern. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> My first note, the Columbia Pictures lady put on the glasses. Oh, I wish they were Oakley's. Opening credits headed through the universe, lots of stars and constellations, and produced by Amblin Entertainment. So Liam Neeson month continues. <laughs> Takes us right to a car, drifting to a stop in Paris. What kind of car is it? Jaguar. Jaguar. Lexus. Team Lexus. <laughs> Oh, Team Lexus, whoa! This movie is an entire long ad for Lexus. Oh, no, we're getting there. Where it's literally just a Lexus commercial, <laughs> nothing else. I'm sorry, I'm new. Paris 2016, we know this, not because of the Eiffel Tower, but because we get a title card that tells us Paris in 2016. It's important to let us know that's not the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. That's true. And it's important <laughs> to let us know what year it is. That's true. I appreciate that. Hemsworth and Liam get out of the car. They're looking up, and Liam says, God, do I hate Paris. Now, is that a Taken reference? No, right? That'd be too deep of a cut. No, it's not. I totally think it is. I thought it was just a British hate French situation. But he's Welsh, isn't he? He's or, Irish. Or Irish, yeah. But they're the British MIB. Mm, okay. Eiffel Tower's all lit up. They head towards the top with guns drawn. They're searching around. They walk up on someone proposing to the girlfriend. Agent Thor interrupts, says they're with tower security. Liam says, we're terribly sorry, but you're not supposed to be here. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but the Eiffel Tower is a six-time repeat offender. Whoa. I wish I knew how to quit you. Fred Claus. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, oh. The Golden Child, National Treasure Book of Secrets, and Taken 2. But not The Da Vinci Code. I can't tell which Hemsworth is which, by the way. This is the successful one. No, I know this is the <laughs> successful one, but is his name Chris? Is his name Liam? Is his name Evan? The successful is Chris. Yeah. The Miley Cyrus ex-husband is Liam. That's how I know. They were married? And the third one is on Westworld. Oh, there is a third. Golly. That's the Marshall Plumley or <laughs> Hemsworth. MP3. Thor asks if she said yes. He hasn't asked yet. And now Thunder's coming for Thor. See, there's a lot of references here in this. The Paris Taken, Thor and Lightning. Mm. There's a blinking red light. Liam explains that it means there's a breach in Portal 2. Which means the most vile creatures in the entire universe, the Hive, are going to consume every last one of us from the inside out. <laughs> Glasses on, Neuralizer, Flash, Towers close for repairs. Ask her on the way down. They head down the elevator. Pretty fantastic to deliver exposition, then erase it from the characters in the movie so it was <laughs> just for us watching it. That's when Thor gets knocked down the elevator shaft. He catches himself on the elevator. A couple asks who he is. He neuralizes them again, says, ask her on the ground. I chuckled. That was a clever little thing, you know? You keep neuralizing, keep neuralizing. The neuralizer abuse is rampant in this movie. Really? I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, boy. I expected way more. They go up the stairs with some guns they say we've been in the situation before never faced the hive before they've never faced us and we get this line that is just going to be fucking brow beaten into our heads is the universe has a way of leading you to where you're supposed to be at the moment you're supposed to be there you got to read it in the voice always remember the universe has a way of leading you where you're supposed to be at the moment you're supposed to be there and i wrote fire instagram story caption yeah <laughs> throwing that one up at 11 11 that's an 11 11 marshall do you know this scam that it means got going no it's not no. a scam it's absolutely <laughs> a scam you know how i know it's a scam because you just do it to your close friends on instagram <laughs> he'll take a screenshot 11 11 embrace your power own your power <laughs> all this shit and it's a scam it's not a scam yeah well sometimes the universe gets it wrong You've got it wrong. We hear some screeching. They start shooting into the portal. Tentacles come out and it all goes white. 
Cut to Brooklyn 20 years earlier. Clip it, Mays, Rick and Morty. I'm not a huge fan, personally, of the whole three weeks earlier teaser thing. I feel like, you know, we should start our stories where they begin, not start them where they get interested. A kid sleeping in her bed, fell asleep reading A Brief History of Time from the Big Bang to Black Holes by Stephen Hawking. It's not an interesting thing. Like, I'm not going to think this kid's smart. I'm going to think this kid's just an idiot and an asshole. This kid is trying so hard. Trying way too hard. Where are your friends? Go outside. You like space? Her parents are watching TV. They hear a noise. Dad gets his three wood. I mean, did you see what they were watching? No, I didn't see. It's purple rain. The dad was doing a Morris Day impression. I was like, what? What significance is that? He's wearing a print shirt, too. Yes, there you go. That doesn't come back. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Trying to establish he's black. That's <laughs> what that was. We had someone in the writer's room who knew about Prince. <laughs> Amin has direct messaged me Big Bang and Black Hose by Stephen Cocking. I think I deleted it. <laughs> Is that the porn you watched? <laughs> Thinking it was MIB too? <laughs> Might have downloaded that one. We hear a bit of a scuffle. He comes back in. It wasn't an animal. It was a creature. Call the police. The who? The police. And just then the doorbell rings. Kid sees MIB talking to her parents from the window. They call themselves animals. Animal control. Exposition that it was a Tarantian from Andromeda 2. Why do they tell people what it is and then neuralize? Same note too, bro. It's because it's for us. <laughs> Neural's position. This thing is now in her room. This little colorful Furby type. I don't know what it is. It looks like Lilo and Stitch. I don't know which one is Lilo and which one is Stitch in that movie, but the little furry animal one. It's like a Pokemon that you're expecting to eat her at any moment. She sees the cover story from them of it being a raccoon. She wants to hide the alien. She says her name is Molly. Alien repeats Molly, then says Kabla Nakshulin and jumps out the window. I wonder if that'll come back. Nah, there's no way. Also, let me get this straight. The men in black show up. They tell the people what it is. They neuralize them. They don't get the alien and they leave. Mm -mm. Seems standard. This thing's going to show up all grown up later on in the movie. And when I see it Spoiler before alert. they reveal it, I just said, oh, for fuck's sake. Because <laughs> they had to mention that it hits puberty and turns into a real monster. The alien leaves. It jumps out the window like John Travolta and Poison Rose. Full on dive. spread eagle <laughs> flying squirrel dive out the window. Cut to her as an adult. New York FBI branch. 20 years later, and Tessa Thompson is uh, applying for all these jobs, these government jobs. And I wrote the note I could never enjoy Tessa Thompson's work anymore. Why not, I mean? I went to the Black Panther premiere. And after the premiere, they had an after party at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. I'm on my way out. And Janelle Monet is walking about 10 yards ahead of me. Ample space. But she's wearing this ridiculous gown. Princess Diana wedding gown style with a train that's going forever behind her. I accidentally step on the train. A literal look at me, Louie, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> She stumbles a little bit, as one does, and I'm very apologetic. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. And I look at it, and it's like, oh, it's Monet. It's like, yo, by the way, I'm a huge fan of your work. She was on this show called Electric Dreams, which was Amazon Prime's version of Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Failed. And nobody watched that shit. So I thought, like, I'm going to say this, and she's going to be like, wow, this, yo, that's a deep cut that you would know that. She's not going to give a shit. She gave me the dirtiest look, her, and she was with Tessa Thompson at the time they were dating, and both of them gave me this dirty look, like, how dare you? And I was like, how dare I? How <laughs> dare you? Nobody cares about your shit. And ever since then, man, I've been thumbs down. So what did Tessa Thompson do? She was there? She was there with her, and she did the same. Like, she could have just been like, uh, you know, hey, you know, or yep, something. Yep, you're right. Tessa Thompson should have had your back no. over Janelle Monet, <laughs> who she was dating. Totally makes sense. We've all been in a situation where the person that we're with is upset about something that is ridiculous and overreacting, and you're not going to contradict them, but you're also going to give, like, a little look to the other party, like, I get it. It could even be like a, hey, it's okay, let's go. And I would have been like, all right, cool, you know, long night, whatever. But instead, I got, like, a glare back. I'm like, you glaring? Mm -hmm. You glaring at me? Glaring Thomas. Get out of here. I got a Janelle <laughs> Monet story. What's that? When was the All-Star Game in New Orleans? 2014? Which one? There were two. The earlier one. The earlier one, yeah, I think it was 2014. Yeah, it was the GQ party. She goes through the red carpet, like, step through, take pictures and all that stuff. 
then goes to every photographer, looks at their camera of the photos, says no. See? Went through, I don't know, 10 camera people? I feel so vindicated right now. Awful person. Damn. And forever, I've just been like, man, that was terrible looking. But I've always been like, oh, everyone loves Janelle Monet. Can't say that. But hearing that story, no, I feel vindicated as well. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, look at us. Yeah. I hate them for you. I hate them on your behalf now. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweep it, Maze. He's applying to the FBI. Oh, you're supposed to hate Janelle Monet too. Yeah. Come on, Maze. No, I really liked her in Glass Onion. Oh. No, she was terrible. Hated her. She's applying to the FBI exposition that she scored excellent or above in every area. She didn't choose the division, but she made her own box because she's trying to find the men in black. Then she's at the CIA and starts making spaceship noises. Guy thinks she means accounting, and it's hilarious. Ass on for CIA guy. Now she's doing tech support over the phone for We Care. Spins around in her chair, pretending to choke herself. Marshall, you ever had a job you hated? Because I could not do tech support. I have to do it with my family enough. I've done, like, summer construction jobs in Texas. Ew! Oh, oh my no. God! We're talking about emancipation. That's like chattel slavery. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Being near a roof or, like, a nail gun... That'll make you contemplate, like, how do I get out of here immediately? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, at her IT job, she's also tracking UFOs. <laughs> oh, yeah. How? She's literally tracking UFOs on Windows 2000. <laughs> like, what? Uh, to have this computing power at a call center workstation. <laughs> Guy, thanks for asking if it's A-L-I-E-N-S. I don't know why you always insist on whispering and spelling that. She's trying to figure out the trajectory. Says Jimmy's coming back to get the kids. She goes home, tracks from her home computer, says it's all happening. She takes off. She's mentioned Jimmy a few times, and that's when we see the World News Daily tabloid. Alien X Jimmy says, I'm coming back, baby. For his New Jersey baby mama. How long do you guys think you could keep this up? Because she did 20 years of this. If something happened to me when I was eight or whatever age she was, around 15, I'd be like, Enough. The idea that she went 20 years, mm -hmm. if her parents had been abducted, if they were the ones that were called crazy and they lost their house, I could get it. Basically, she's hanging on to some shit that happened when she was a kid. But everyone's called her crazy, right? So now she's just trying to vindicate. Yeah, but, 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 but like I said, by like 12, you probably like, yeah, I was kind of kind of dumb. Maybe the alien stepped on Janelle Monet's clothing. I don't know. Yeah, fuck her. How about that? <laughs> wow. Whoa. <laughs> Cross her off the guest list. <laughs> Takes a taxi to a warehouse. Keep the meter running. What is the keep the meter running thing? I've never understood. Any taxi driver in New York is driving the hell off. Like, you idiot. No. You don't give a fuck about getting paid extra. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's a fence that says high voltage. She can't figure out where she's supposed to be. And then she sees a bird disappear right into that fence, right into that picture some kind of portal or something. No, it's just a disguise from the MIB. And she steps through onto platform nine and three quarters. <laughs> she tests it by touching where the supposed electrified fence is. Wouldn't you test it first on the cement base? I would throw something through it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not putting my hand there. Yeah, you've been researching aliens for 20 years, and you just throw your arm right into a portal. <laughs> right in there. No problem at all. They're interrogating Jimmy, asking what he's doing back on Earth. He plays dumb. Ass off for Jimmy. Jimmy is incredible. <laughs> this is Earth? <laughs> she gets back in the taxi, tail in the car. She gets to HQ. We see that infamous doorway. The ventilator building for the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And she just acts like she's supposed to be there. And she's got her own outfit, Zach. She does. The black suit with the skirt. <sighs> this is my question, Marshall. <laughs> Greg, she's been obsessed about this for 20 years. She saw two people once when she was eight yeah. wear black suits. Well, clearly they all wear black suits. This is how it is. This is what we do. <laughs> Now, you've had to fall in line with a lot of football stuff in life, right? But that's a crazy assumption. That's a crazy thing to think that everyone just has to do. I would imagine her apartment is filthy. She doesn't get out much. <laughs> she just thinks that's okay. And she opens the door so triumphantly. You don't know if there's a laser going to hit you in the face right when that happens. You just walk through a fake fence. <laughs> now you're just like, I guess I'm invincible. I will say this. I like that she is acting like she's been there before. She just walks in like she belongs. That's definitely the move. That'll get you into most places, unless Marshall is there pretending to bounce. <laughs> Agent reading the paper says they brought the thing in a couple of minutes ahead of her. She's given jargon as she walks through. She gets in the elevator and calls the alien amateur hour. There's a pug sitting next to the agent asks if he's going to call that in. Frank. Frank the pug. Sheesh. Talk about amateur hour. She gets scanned in the elevator. Unauthorized visitor. Lockdown engaged. Elevator shoots way down below the floor. 
And now she's being interrogated. Emma Thompson wants to know who she's working for. Emma Thompson is Agent O. Flipping through her exposition holograms. She doesn't believe she's on her own. They've got her FBI application. It says that she failed the psych evaluation delusional. Delusions of grandeur. Wouldn't that tip them off? Isn't someone supposed to be monitoring the FBI in this MIB world? I think that's what they're talking about when the other person says normally they would have recruited her. Based on this profile, because that's how Will Smith got recruited, guys. They basically have her whole internet history and application history. She's harmless, but also she's nuts. That's a dangerous game, too, by the way, (laughs) internet history. Oh, I thought you meant harmless, but nuts is a dangerous game. (laughs) Emma says to neuralize her. She doesn't want that. Erased her parents' memory, but didn't take hers. Whole life, they called her crazy. They're impressed that she's hacking the Andromeda telescope. I don't know if y'all are still coming up with new categories, but she's got to have the enhance category, like from Super Troopers. <laughs> Just the fake <laughs> hacking. <laughs> click, 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 enhance. Click, 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 Andromeda 2. <laughs> Took 20 years to find them. How many people can say that? She says, I found you. She said, I don't have a family. I don't have pets. And I said, no chance she wouldn't have a pet. Oh, she's definitely a cat lady. She's got cats, man. Birds. Maybe a bird or a lizard. Yes. Some kind of snake, something. Yeah. Yes. An iguana. What she says, I mean, is... Because I have absolutely no life whatsoever. I have nothing. I have no dog, no cat. Definitely no chill. I have nothing that I couldn't happily walk away from, which makes me perfect for this job. And when she said this line, I wanted so badly to turn this movie off and walk away. <laughs> I paused it and I just went and did something else in the apartment. We're going to call a timeout. Same note too, bro. My note was no chill. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that was the glimpse of the type of writing that we were going to get in this movie, which is internet. Just a little too internet self-aware. Well, you're certainly suitably tragic. No love, no relationships. They just distract you from what's important. Oh, really? And what's important? The truth of the universe. It's been 15 minutes and I haven't even begun to laugh or like no, no. formulate. <laughs> That's why I say we owe Will Smith apology. He was like ad-libbing, being goofy, at least when he was doing the cop stuff at Ben and Black One. Well, is that fair, Marshall? I don't even know if she can, but she's not even trying to be funny ever. It's so bad. Should we be putting them up against him? Wouldn't that be like, ah, these guys aren't Tom Brady. No, 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 no. A couple things. The fact that Marshall said, I haven't even begun to start laughing. I like the idea of beginning to start laughing. (laughs) Not laughing. That part where your body gets ready. There was a camera watching me watch this movie, and my face would just be deadpan or just annoyed. Man. Second of all, we get to this point where... She's in. Way too easy. Will had to go through this whole tryout montage, even after they identified he's a good candidate. What is that about? And third, and this probably is most disturbing, I know earlier I asked you guys what were your fashion faux pas that you embraced. I used to think collarless shirts were cool. Oh, no. Yeah, man. Like a button-up collarless shirt? A button-up shirt with no collar. How long did this go? Longer than it should have. Let's just put it like that. Is it called like a Mandarin collar or a priest Collar, is that what you mean? It's a crew neck button up shirt. Or there was my really fancy one. My really fancy. <laughs> yeah, this one Shut the fuck had two up. buttons and it went to the left around almost. <laughs> like Demolition Man? Oh. Yeah, a little bit like what? that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you really think a collarless shirt is going to solve all your problems? I mean, <laughs> no, but it looks damn good on you. That's true. A little montage. Here's your little training. I mean, it's a week one training progress, week two training progress. Then Agent O hits accepted future cinephobe. She's already in. They did your training off camera. And then we get a suit tailoring montage. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, they're just kind of speeding it up a little bit. Because they got to get to the real action in this movie, which is Marshall waiting to begin to laugh. (laughs) No, they just got to get to the Lexus commercial. That's all. (laughs) She does not exist. Emma is giving Tessa another speech. We are the men in black. The men? Uh, Don't start. I've had the conversation. They don't seem to be able to let it go. Attachment issue, I think. Jeez. That's a future callback, by the way. I'm sending this one out. (laughs) Finds her a first assignment. She wants her neuralizer. She's got to earn it. There's a probationary period. Her assignment is MIB London. Cut to London. Thor is drinking a blue drink. He coughs up blue dust. 
Wow, that is smooth. This is a little like the opening scene of Beer Fest. Yeah, when they're playing cards with Father... They're playing quarters. Oh, quarters, yeah, with Father O'Malley. A lot of sketchy looking people. There's a blue snake in a cage in the middle of the table. He calls the place very eyes wide shut. Reference. Grabs a card out of the cage. The snake has three heads. He nearly gets out without being bitten. Pulls an ace. He got a straight. That's a wild game to play, by the way. It feels like it's Russian roulette poker. Lethal high stakes gambling. Reminds me of Lewis Bond when he's out at the beach doing the, the scorpion game where he's got to take a shot with a scorpion on his hand. I got to be honest. I hate the Daniel Craig James Bond. Stop. Stop. I just think he's so boring. No. What? I didn't like the Pierce Brosnan. I haven't liked one since Sean Connery. Okay. You just hate it all. Okay. Yeah. I was traumatized by the sack mutilation <laughs> scene in that first one. And I was just like, all right, I'm good. That was so crazy. Yeah. I didn't need to see that. All right. Moving on. He wants to speak to someone about getting more of that blue stuff to pedal. Alien has a very strict no men in black policy. Says, I don't blame you. <laughs> Who'd want those assholes coming in here? Morons in black, if you ask me. Got him. What a bunch of dicks. Am I right? Someone starts trying to choke him with piano wire from behind. He backflips over. He kicks the guy, so now his head is in the snake cage. The alien snake escapes, attacks him. There's just a lot of dumb, unnecessary, uninteresting violence. And FYI, your little club here sucks. What 14-year-old is writing the retort? Marshall, how is there no riffing in this movie? Yeah. There is riffing. It's bad. And they're not 14. They're 23. They just came from Twitter. They logged <laughs> off Twitter and said, hey, this is what the black people are tweeting. Let's fit some more of this into the movie. The snake bit him, then also bit the main alien. Thor begs the female alien who has the antidote, says he'll give her anything she wants. She hesitates. Anything I want? Smash cut to smash in the cut. They fucked. He lifts up the covers and takes her purple suction cup tentacle arm off his chest. She gave our man up for some dick. For that hammer. For Thor. That Thor's hammer, yeah. Mjolnir, baby. Thor's way better looking than him. He put her ass to sleep, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Woke her up around one. Where's the top gun? <laughs> Molly's taking an express train to London. The worm guys get off the subway car talking about a kid neuralizing himself. I said Tessa's getting on the tube because I had just been in London. <laughs> The tube. I told him, do that too much and you'll go blind. <laughs> uh, why does a train have any other appearance? Why would it look like a subway when it stops at MIB headquarters with all these aliens coming off of it? Yeah, it's like you're trying to trick people past a point that they don't need to even be at. Because we need to see it transform, baby. But when it gets to London, it doesn't transform into like a London train. It just stays a super futuristic MIB train. You're right. It's a dumb fucking movie. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's noticing all these weird looking aliens. She's told to report to new agent orientation. A lot of this movie, and for the franchise too, I don't want to just pinpoint this movie, but a lot of this movie is just, what's a weird looking alien we can come up with? I made a note that at least in the first two, there were aliens that either were little side stories and they had character, like the cigarette aliens. Yeah. I'd watch an entire movie about them over this shit. <laughs> but so many of the aliens had like a funny voice, a line of dialogue that was semi-entertaining. These are just like cool CGI. What's the craziest thing we can come up with? They're extras. Yeah. They're just walking around. Ugh. So bad. That's when we see the alien surveillance system. Ariana Grande, Elon Musk, Donald Glover. Reference. Oh, no, that one makes sense. Is Elon Musk the new Donald Trump? Remember Trump was in, like, all these movies? And we're like, why is this guy in here? We're like, ah, he's harmless. And then years later, we're like, shit, this motherfucker was in this, too. <laughs> is Elon Musk, like, in a bunch of shit that, well, not years from now, probably right now. He was in one of the Iron Mans. Oh, that's right. He is Iron Man 2, I think, right? Yep, the bad Iron Man. Liam's name is High T. Is that just a British thing? Yes. It's in the trivia. O told him to expect some great things, and great things you shall get. A furry alien comes up to her. Someone yells, don't touch him. She wait, does. Wait. It breaks apart into, like, finches? I don't know. Tiny bird rats. <laughs> May's clipping, kicking, and screaming. Finches. Fishes? No, 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 no. No, finches. Birds. I'm holding them. They're tiny birds. Everybody's chasing down the different parts to catch it. She gets a present. It's a compass? Okay. This scene... Has no context. No. <laughs> she just opens this box, gets a compass, and then it's over. That's the end of the scene. Well, it says a journey of a thousand light years begins with a single step. High T. Huh. I wonder why they included this. Cut to Marrakesh. Oh. There's a janitor mopping up a floor. Generic Middle Eastern music maze. I got the TikTok where they have all the generic Middle Eastern <laughs> stuff. The music, the camel chewing. Welcome, my friend. Sandalit Twins. 
You can tell because he's dancing while he mops. The TV goes static, lights flicker, the ceiling fan creaks. When's the last time a TV went static you like that? 20 years ago? They're in Marrakesh, though. Oh, okay. Taken two when they're trying to watch soccer. He goes up to the fuse box on the roof, curses at his boss in the other room. He takes something out, it flickers, and then two shadowy nebulous figures behind him appear. You know what also appears? An ass on for him as he says, all right, buddy, drink this. Oh, he's terrible. <laughs> what is that line? Drink this. That is the dancer trying to act. That's what that line is. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and my note right after this, I want to go back to bed. <laughs> they zap him with energy. He becomes kind of a potato. I thought he melted like a candle. It doesn't matter. Shapeless blob and collapses. Body falls down to the ground. The aliens materialize into human form, and now it's Le Twins United. Whoa. And I wrote lyrics to the twins song in French. It's two of them. And twins. Jack. Twins in French is just le twin? It's jumeau, but there they twin. It's what? Jumeau. That's not what I thought you said. <laughs> you want me to slow that down for you, Zach? Or should we wait for Easy, Shippers Easy, Kyrie. Easy, Kyrie. <laughs> they go to some shop, turn a display into a sword. They tell the shop owner they need to see the queen. There's a secret area, a bunch of tiny little aliens, pawns, chess pieces, working on gadgets. Once they state their business with the queen, they need someone to die and show a hologram of another potato melted looking thing. And the queen looks away. They stole this from Star Wars, the hollow puck. Tiny Kumail starts referencing subsections of the Treaty of Andromeda 2. Kumailian. Don't kill Jababians. This is not negotiable. Twins turn into celestial beings. I call that galaxy brain. Okay, it's slightly negotiable. Marshall, where are you on Kumail Nanjiani? Because Amin hates him. I used to like him. He was pretty picky. He never did anything that blew me away, but I used to find him pretty amusing. What changed? Then he went into Eternals, I'm Shredded. Oh, that movie's awful. So when he got jacked, you hate him now? Yeah, your personality becomes, oh, I got shredded. Yeah. I have a chiseled jaw now because of... Maybe or maybe not HGH. There ain't no babies. <laughs> We've all seen his before, okay? There's one way to get that way, and it's not that. I love that they all just get men's fitness articles. Meanwhile, the entire industry just, like, is shooting up. Like, we know what you're doing. Yeah, it's shooting up. It's You're being force-fed chicken breasts, like, every two hours, oh. even as you're sleeping. This insane workout program, personal shit. Like, Mac from It's Always Sunny said, anyone can do it. And yeah. then he laid out this most insane plan. It's like, all you have to do is have a studio back you, and you have six months of this and nine months of that. I respect him for just being honest and making fun of it. But, yeah, I didn't want to take himself seriously. I can't do it anymore. I had somebody message me that they wanted me to get fat, like, fat. Mac so that I could embody what everybody thinks I look like. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, but then he got super jacked, more jacked than ever before because he had the resources behind him. Yeah. If I got fat, I just stay fat, guys. They call these aliens Jababians, and I just wrote Jababian Clowny. Yeah. I thought of that yesterday, <laughs> not when I took notes. Oh, really? For this movie? <laughs> oh, man. Right there, Jababian Clowny. Cut to Hemsworth tearing through the streets. Driving in London is so stressful, man. Oh, yeah, because the other side. Not only that, crossing the street is stressful because I would go to cross the street and I'd look the wrong way. And like, oh, there ain't no cars coming. And then like, oh, shit. That's where you're supposed to look both ways. Nah, man. That's the other side right there. That's where you look the other way. I never look both ways. I look one way. <laughs> so typewriter repair shop, that's their cover in MIB London for how to get in. Like the VCR repair shop in RIPD. Same not too. Didn't they steal that from Men in Black? Isn't there the VCR repair? No. There's the pawn shop where Tony Shalhoub works. Oh, maybe it's a pawn shop. That's what it was. Yeah. He gets through. There's some joke about a typewriter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> some shit. Some shit. I don't know. <laughs> M is learning about the original Alien Depot. The Eiffel Tower is the hub for it. Eiffel? Was an MIB agent, one of the first. Oh. Wow. This little exposition here from a literal four eyes. <laughs> Intergalactic <laughs> refugee seeking safety. She sees H walk in. There's an alien slowing down time with its mind, keeps rewinding, rewatching him point. This alien, whose name is Marlene, I believe, is horny. <laughs> He's just so <laughs> yummy. Saved the world once with just his wits and a Series 7 deatomizer. From what? The Hive. That'll come back. High T talking about an awful incident in Marrakesh. Thor comes in late. Rafe Spall is playing a douche. Says he's cleaning up Thor's mess. You should have seen the mess I had to clean up this morning, and I said... <laughs> what? 
The Jababian Clowny royal family has a layover. Vungus the Ugly. Vungus is on his way to Centaurus A. Hologram always adds 10 pounds. Jababian society doesn't allow for certain indiscretions. In short, he wants to be shown a good time. And if they say no, Jababian mining vessels will crush them into galactic dust. Rafe says, we used to protect the Earth from the scum of the universe. Now we're protecting the scum. Isn't that ironic? That's why it's right up Thor's street. Your cup of tea, H. Fungus doesn't drink tea. Prefers vodka, tequila, hand sanitizer, sometimes all at once. This so one time we woke up in Bangkok, handcuffed to a horse. That's when Liam interrupts him. He's going to be Vungus' chaperone. Vungus specifically asked for him. He said, absolutely. Hopefully we don't end up handcuffed to a horse again. And then some poppy talk banter. I've been home by midnight. Good boy. If you will. Good boy, if you will. Good man, I think you said. Keep daddy happy, yeah. Yeah. But like this. You look after puppies so well. You're so jealous, aren't you? Puppy's little fancy boy. You wish you had a puppy. I'm looking at my notes and I'm just like, I don't want to say any of this stuff. It's just dumb. Like, it's such a <laughs> dumb set of lines and plot. Marshall, you really did something here. Man, I feel like I've broken you and I feel bad about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hot Rod made me angry, right? Jupiter Ascending and Cats made me angry. This is what the celestial aliens did, melting me and turning me into a melted potato candle or something. Like, that's what I feel like this movie did. Well, they say it's worse for someone to be indifferent. I'd rather you love me or hate me. I'm indifferent. Yep. I could care less about this entire feat. Oh, I hate this movie. Let's not mince words there. I'm not indifferent. I'm pretty sure I hate this movie. Tessa's walking through. She finds H asleep at his desk, drops something on his desk to wake him up. She offers her assistance for the Vungus meat. She's a bit of a Jababian wonk, she says. I don't know what wonk means. Picking up British slang real quick. She's been there one day. <laughs> Jababian wank. <laughs> she compiled a dossier for him to read. He says, oh, a dossier. I love a good dossier. He says to ask around. He works alone. She says they can basically read minds and your cards. Claire cognizant empath jargon. She leaves him to his quote unquote meditation. Says, you know what your tell is? You snore when you meditate. Uh -huh. See, and that really broke his tough exterior. Cause then he says, yeah, I could use some backup. Cut to nighttime. She wants to go over strategy. And he says with this particular club, aliens want to look like humans and the humans want to look like aliens. Loosen up, lose the tie. He unbuttons four or five buttons and she closes them back up. Yo, he unbuttons down to a midriff. Like that is a deep deep unbuttoning <laughs> marshall who's the teammate that you played with that would unbutton too many buttons on a button-up shirt what's the occasion though just because doesn't matter just going out going out comes out the shirt that's way too many buttons unbuttoned i had a lineman in green bay his name was josh Sitton. if you got him drunk enough it would be like a button an hour <laughs> and then his shirt would just be <laughs> off and just sweat i mean at that time he was 320 <sighs> Just a huge gut. Oh, so he's not solid all the way down. Like, he's got a gut. It's funny. He's a weird body. He is solid. He's so strong, but it has the worst looking gut <laughs> ever. It's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> Fine line between casual and saddest man on earth. Like in a taxi, it's a special entrance. It's a gas seat drops down to a club below and we're in a nightclub. Boneless by Steve Aoki. Aliens and humans dancing. The Vungus Among Us. They've got a handshake. H-bomb. The song that's playing sounds like the hallelujah song from the Church of Gronk. That's because it is the same song. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Vungus greets M. She says she's heard a lot about him. Highly redacted, of course. Vungus starts speaking some Jababian language, essentially says she's hot, according to H. Works a lot better in Jababia, but you know that since you speak fluent Jababian. Or tells him to dance while he gets drinks, and she asks if he's pimping her out to Vungus. What? No. What the hell would give you that impression? They look over at Fungus, who's just gyrating massive hip circles on the couch. Yo, that's a good move, okay? Let me tell you. Big guy sitting on the couch just gyrating his hips. That's a good move. Gotta mesmerize him. <laughs> a little hypnotic right there. She says, let her know if he wants to use her as alien bait. She doesn't like to be lied to. Oh, like pretending to be an expert in something you're not? In case you haven't noticed, we're in the lying business. Are we? 
Aren't we? Welcome, Welcome to, to Jababia. Jababians are prickly. We want them to be happy so they don't destroy our planet and everything on it. That's the mission. She's not going to fornicate with the Jababian. And here come the twins. The twins. Of course, they have to dance, right? Uh, There's no way they could just be in this movie. You don't put them in the movie to not dance, I mean. <laughs> but only one of them dances. The other one's just walking behind him, staring. There's a lot of TikTok pop locking videos that look like this. In the longer scene, they take turns while one dances, the other one leers behind, and then they kind of switch back and forth. So they did edit. Yes. Oh, my God. Wait till the trivia. I got the deleted scenes. I watched them all. Is there a worse way to almost get assassinated than someone breakdancing while they do it? They're breakdance fighting. Is there a worse way to go out? The only thing that would be worse is if someone murdered me, assassinated me while doing... Twitter patois. Oh. <laughs> it's the assassination for me and then dart to the neck. <laughs> I like this where she walks up to H, she says 12 o'clock. says, you're damn right it is. Nice young. <laughs> nice young. They know too, bro. That was a golden dumpster. Vungus grabs H, says, this is serious. H notices the color of Vungus's arms changing like she mentioned earlier. What happened to you? Nothing. Gets them to notice the twins. They fire some tiny little glow dart that works its way through the crowd. It sticks Vungus in the neck. He gets woozy and they're getting him out of there. They load him into a Resvani tank, futuristic SUV. Tell him to sleep it off. Thor doesn't want to do paperwork because they're lazy. Off in the distance, his vehicle explodes and goes flying into the buildings. They run up. Fungus says, help me. The twins are in the street. M says on the ground. H says, MIB, freeze. She says, palms down. He says, hands up. And they switch. Gotta come up with something consistent. So I saw this movie in the theater. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> I don't even think it's bottom 10 of movies I've seen in the theater. Yes, we get it, Zach. You were born to do cinephobe. But you've been working on this for 20 years. <laughs> this scene is the only scene from the movie that I remember. Really? Everything else was a complete surprise to me. Is it because you walked out right after? <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not. <laughs> I'm just going to go with palms down for consistency. The twins get on the ground, palms down, their eyes glow. The ground starts moving like a waterbed. They're like foreplaying with the ground. It's a little too sensual the way that their hands are moving on the ground. There's a lot of tension. Oh, man. There's a lot of tension between the twins and this asphalt. But it's surprisingly supple <laughs> at the same time. They slap the ground and it sends the street like a wave at the agents. They go flying. They grab hidden guns from the car. Petrol cap. The twins are dance dodging. Door handle. They could just dodge. They don't have to dance while they dodge. <laughs> no, they got to dance. Look, man, it's the twin. I don't know how to tell you this any other way. They've danced twice already. Not enough. I don't know what point I wrote this note. Now's as good a time as ever. Oh, boy. Honestly, who is their agent? That dude deserves <laughs> ass off for the acting job he did to sell them to the studio. <laughs> All right, they need more firepower. They get more guns. Side view mirror. How many tries does it take for them to kill this dude? The arrow, the explosion. Now they're shooting guns. What kind of assassins are they? It doesn't matter. Blast holes into them, into Galaxy Brain, then they reform. Thor's never seen that before, so he pulls out a bigger gun with a hub capture, a magazine. So I don't get it. Multiple times we see these celestial beings, they kind of move at whatever rate they want to move at. So why are they always slow walking right. towards... Because they want to kill with style, Marshall. Yeah, Anyone can make a catch, right? But to do a one-handed <laughs> grab means more. Is this step up? Are they trying to get judges' <laughs> scorecards on the way? Step up to the streets? Step up to these streets? We're just in a <laughs> They're saving the last dance for the finale, Marshall. <laughs> they turn parts of a car into a giant drill like it's forged in fire. They send it at Vungus. Agents shoot it to save him. H says for M to go get Vungus. He'll cover her. And that's when Vungus tells her that H has changed. He could feel it. Then he touches her arm and he ejaculates. No, he says he can trust her. <laughs> the twins make two big spiked Frisbee discs. Now I'm pissed off. He gives her an object and says to hide it. Something is wrong in men in black. What? Vungus, what is this? It's the only thing that can protect you. Ah, he collapses and dies after giving her the MacGuffin. MIB pulls up after H fires a massive missile launcher from car parts at the twins. Where's your fancy dance moves now? I wrote, I gotta take a nap at this point. H checks on Vungus, he's dead. The bickering agent walks through the fake scene and wants to know what happened. Well done, well done. He wants to know why she's here. She's walking through the crime scene. 
probationary agent, bickering banter. You had one job. You had one very simple job. You tossless. You had one job to do. There's a lot of just bad attempts at banter. Just skip it. Wizard slime ball, reptilian slime ball. Dude, I'm telling you, my next note, they're in the debriefing. I'm not even trying to- I knew your notes were going to be shit. <laughs> well, gave it away. You know what he says? Just like a mean, I switched off the moment you started talking. And my note is same note too, bro. <laughs> there it is. IT will not save H this time. H says that they'll be fine. In High T's office, they see a painting of Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones fighting the villain from, I think that's the second movie. No, it's the first one because they're at the World's Fair. The cockroach. That's the part of Men in Black that this movie was absolutely missing. Vincent D'Onofrio, his performance as an alien in a human suit. Sugar. Water. <laughs> There's a painting of Liam and Thor defeating the Hive. You know what this movie is missing, though? It's an accompanying music video and song. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. All movies are missing that these days. Liam says the Jababians want their heads. We've got a forensics report. Some jargon on the suspects, identifying what they are. They're from a place called Draco. Draco. Draco, that's hive territory. And they're a species called Diadinum. Sounds like duodenum. Get some exposition on the hive. Don't just destroy their enemies. They take them over from within. I wonder if that will come back. Mm. M holds the object in her pocket that Vungus gave her. Agent C calls it a fiasco, a farrago, and requires the immediate invocement of Article 13. Don't be a dick. Who says farrago? Article 13 is immediate termination followed by neuralization. Liam wants one good reason not to do it. They fumble for their glasses and try to put them on real quick. We're not saying that. Saying what? That we're going to kill the president. Oh, shit. Say it again. Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? I tried to get a video, but I couldn't flip the thing fast enough. If he erases them, they'll never know the truth. He calls off Article 13, wants M to explain herself. She starts throwing out a conspiracy theory. He says, if you think about it, really think about it, Vungus, how many people really knew that he was there? People in this room, perhaps a dozen high-level agents. She suggests that it's someone inside MIB. The mole, sir, inside these very walls. Sir, they are obviously making this up as they go along. What are you talking about, a mole? In the whole history of the company, there's not been so much as a leak mole. It sounds like something a mole would say. Don't be absurd. Classic mole talk. Sounds like mole 101. Enough. My mole steak. What was that? <laughs> Listen, just get it out of your system. No, I'm fine. Well, I insist. Yeah, we can work okay, together so better good, if you just worry. got out. Mole! Bloody mole! We're not supposed to talk about the bloody mole, but there's a bloody mole winking me in the face. I'm going to chop it off and cut it up and make some guacamole. They've been compromised. It puts the planet at risk. Time to find the killers, find the mole, M, work the case. Get the weapons department working on something that can neutralize the dyads. I picked the worst movie to do this sober, man. Damn. Listeners, I'm dragging right now. <laughs> oh, no shit. You <laughs> talked God. four times in this podcast. <laughs> and one of them was shitting on Janelle Monet. <laughs> oh, shit, man. I hate her. Liam tells H that he's tired of covering for him. He's dealt with the hive before. Points at the painting. I don't know where the hell he has gone. Ass off. Oh, Liam is completely ass off in this movie. Uh, I actually thought you could lead this place. I was wrong about you. Dismisses H. H says he wasn't wrong about him. He apologizes for letting Liam down. Wants another chance to fix this. And we cut to a lab. They're looking at the little dart that got Vungus in the neck, but somehow didn't kill him because they blew him up later. <laughs> and try to shoot him. Not just a blade. Could have poison. H says that High T wants him to run point on this one. C doesn't believe it. Tells M that T wants her to shadow him on this. M wants the actual truth from H. C turns to an underling and says, I'm sick of you. <laughs> just shits on this guy. This guy never comes back. Also, you know what I noticed here? Tessa Thompson walks weird. She kind of walks like an alien to the point where I thought she was going to end up being an alien in this movie. Oh. She walks like she's always late and trying to rush, but not trying to run. You coming? The world's not going to save itself. Are you saying you need me to save the world? Uh-huh. Thought so. They're taking the tube to Marrakesh. By the way, they did this whole thing where he says it was electric back there, back and forth. And I said, that reminds me of Cinephobe. How? Well, we're electric. We go back and forth. Like riff. Not this episode of me. <laughs> not this episode, no. <laughs> nope. All right, we're going to Marrakesh. You know how I know we're going to Marrakesh? How? Middle Eastern music. Ding, 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 ding. Welcome, my friend. They find a ceramic tile mosaic that looks like an alien, which is like the French street artist Invader. Call it a Cromulian tag in their galaxy, a symbol for hope or Annihilation, which is a movie that Tessa Thompson was in. Actually, it's Harmony. On Earth, it means we're entering an MIB safe haven. She says it's in the handbook, and he says don't believe everything you read. 
Got two aliens working on an alien bike. One of the aliens is the other one's beard. It's Nandor, and his beard creature is Basam. Beard rat. We hear that you and Riza split up. Which is a old dirty bastard. <laughs> the whole rest of the Wu Tang clan. Spectre deck. Dun, dun, dun. We get a little bit of awkwardness with H, very unimportant old friend of his. And that's when I wondered what's the opposite of banter? Ugh. Because that's what this movie has. I don't know if we have a term for the opposite of banter, but it might just be MIB International from now on. Am I banter? Verbal quicksand, just sinking. It is. It's verbal quicksand. This beard is expositioning. Like she runs a criminal syndicate. Yeah, she's a gun runner. Nandor says she's a very successful businesswoman. I love a businesswoman. <laughs> Get it? Because it's female empowerment, the movie. H keeps trying to move on from talking about her, and the beard alien says, you said that psycho's going to slit his throat. Nandor turns around and starts slapping his beard. They walk away, say to cover up the bike. It's a violation. The agent gives C footage from outside the club of Vungus, giving that object to M. McGuffin. C's glad this hasn't been shown to T yet. Makes a call. Now the twins are in Marrakesh again. Liam's muttering to himself, goodness me. Oh, boy. <laughs> Big time Amazon product placement here with the packages outside that shop. Oh, man. You're telling me that Amazon packages on a crowded city street would just be sitting there for several days? Come on. For days, man. Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> Citizens at me let me know every day. Someone stole my Amazon package. <laughs> also, this is where we see Nandor's face with his beard digitally removed, and it is disturbing. <laughs> it's weird. It's a little Henry Cavill. It's worse. It's worse than the digitally removed mustache in Justice League. Because <laughs> his chin jaw is artificially shortened and his neck is lengthened. It's horrifying. Shop owner's dead and melted. They find the secret area. All the little aliens are smashed except for Kumalian. One more step and I'll liquefy your bangs, pretty boy. <sighs> you thought the absence of banter was <laughs> strong. But you have yet to meet Pawnee. No. What do we call you, Sport? Sport is not what you call me. They name him Pawnee. What happened here? Oh, we had the best party. Kanye showed up and dropped like a whole new album. And it was some of his best work. Look around. We got our asses kicked. Retroactively problematic. Yeah. <laughs> the queen gasps for air and then dies later. Pawnee says he'll seppuku himself. Yeah, I get a lot of talk about Pawnee offing himself here. <laughs> oh, I said, go ahead and do it. <laughs> You coward. <laughs> you better stop me. I'm killing myself. M tells Bonnie the queen wouldn't want him to go through with it. Says she's a queen to the extent that all women are. Ah. Uh, and the internet has reared its head again. I do not like this Pawnee POV fisheye cam. They're like leaning down into it. It's just too much. I hate that shot. I bet you the original script had her saying, Yas Queen. But then <laughs> they decided to tone it down just a bit. Pawnee says the best way to honor the dead is go on living. They agree. Pawnee pledges his loyalty to Agent M. It's too late. I've already pledged my loyalty. I wish you'd said no, no, no before. Now he can join them. M wants to tell H about the object from Vungus. MacGuffin. And he's already got it out of her pocket. She says, you stole it from me? He says, I recovered evidence that you stole from a crime scene. She sees agents pull up. Why are they here? Either there's an award show that we're not aware of or we're in deep shit. Get a lot of talk between T and C about this being nonsense. H is one of the best agents to ever wear the suit. Hasn't been the same since the Hive. C believes that Vunga stole the object from the Jababian War Department Advanced Research Division. Jargon! With all due respect, you let Thor and M go. Essentially, maybe M's right about there being a mole in MIB. He FaceTimes Thor, tells him to get out, get safe, and report. And he ominously says there's a mole as he stares at Rafe. So we're supposed to think that Rafe is the mole. Misdirection. <laughs> well, misdirection indeed. H is going to give M the object. He'll draw the agents away. Meter in 20. Waves to them and we got a chase. Twins are stalking M. Agents are chasing H. M notices the lights flickering. Twins are running the rooftops. H goes to the aliens and wants to use that bike they were working on. As long as it's borrow, not steal. He gives them some water because it's very hot out there. It's hard to drive. He says it's nothing like riding a bike. Twins drop down. She sees them. She hides behind a cart, escapes briefly. They track her to an empty alley. They have her surrounded. And that's when H drives through and tells her to jump on. That's actually when I stopped taking notes. This movie is so dumb. 
Wow. Wow. I come back with some more notes later, but I take a strong break here. Oh, good. So the pause that you've had for the last 30 minutes will continue. <laughs> yeah, you just jumped in to tell us that you're not taking notes anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I have notes sometimes. I'm like, this is not, like, I have, a lot of the notes are, I don't like you, Kumail. I wow. don't like this guy. Like, it just over and over again. Yeah. They boost up into the sky. They stole that from Batman. And then they're all floating. Pawnee is skydiving, trying to catch up. They land without any gravity impact. Can't believe that actually worked. When they're coming back down, there's no way. He's a, a tiny little thing. He's not falling at the same speed they're falling at. No. <laughs> and he's definitely not falling faster. No. <laughs> no. Do you think that he's so small that there's a gravitational pull on their bodies? No, there's no, no possible way. Okay. <laughs> I'm just surprised that a bird of prey didn't eat him, which is what I was rooting for. When they land, he gets the neuralizer out, and she just starts zapping people willy-nilly. What about everybody else that saw <laughs> the galaxy brain guys, saw the bike? They didn't get everybody. This movie really misuses the neuralizer. Agree. Yeah. You call them the galaxy brain guys? <laughs> I mean, didn't you get flashbacks to the Power Rangers zooming through Mos Espa and Book of Boba Fett? I did, but I'd not enough to write a note about it. They get cut off by the agents. This red button might be hyperdrive. She thinks hyperdrive is blue. He says, you have to trust your gut. He starts going right at the group of agents. Pawnee says, somebody press something. He presses it. They go up in the air and they just disappear. Did they time travel, teleport, wormhole? Who cares? Crash land in a desert dune. The red button was awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Let's push the red button again. The object is moving and making noises. She picks it up, becomes some kind of glowing orb in a contraption. We get jargon on on jargon, on jargon. See the core? How uh -huh. it keeps emitting convective energy across the interior of the photosphere? Mm, yeah, yeah, no, I see all the, I see the, the photosphere bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sh those are thermonuclear explosions. Wait, wait, and what does that mean? Like a, like a bomb or something? I think what we're looking at is a super compressed star, and by the color temperature, I'd say it's a blue giant. Let's just press the button. Let's see, see what this thing does. Here. Are you suggesting that we try a weaponized star for fun? Mm-hmm. Well, for science and fun. Well, the two aren't mutually exclusive. Also, the caption for the noise it was making was chuckling, which seems problematic. <laughs> that sounds racist. Supercharged that. I don't want that word in there. Things. <laughs> yeah. It is. Hemsworth is making some great, dumb, confused guy faces. This is his bread and butter. More jargon. It lets out this puny little ray before stopping. It ratches up. There's a big blast that comes to the desert, and it's a massive canyon that it's created. Yep. Made the Grand Canyon. I wonder if anyone's going to notice. Back to London HQ. C tells Liam they got away. I believe the appropriate phrase is, you lost them. Says they had help. Liam says probably, but whatever H is doing, there's a reason. It's about protecting the institution, questioning loyalties, questioning judgment. Liam just intimidates him and we go back to the desert. The gun's back to being the small object. They made a fire. They wonder about their trustworthiness. H starts complaining about being sick of hearing you've changed from people. You've always been this way, vaguely inept, arrogant, reckless. Did I miss anything? Pretty good at saving the planet. Jeez. <laughs> the rules are there are no rules, and Pawnee says, well, that's a rule. Like wild card month. Themeless. No, the theme is no theme. All of a sudden, the beard alien has been with them on the bike the whole time in a water bottle. Uh, does he have two little tiny Coronas strapped to his chest? Feel a nice and hydrated age. Never had a bath before. Lost two pounds in dirt alone. Oh, God, we drank from that. I thought it tasted like a living beard. What? That's not a good line. That's bad writing. That's crazy. That's bad writing. But here's the thing. You got to think about a writer's room. They have to come to a consensus, usually. Multiple people agreed that that was the best thing that they could offer. How many levels of <laughs> editorial and writing oh. process did this go through to get to that? Oh, my God. Marshall, did you ever have to play football, do practice with no water? Where they're like, no water today, guys. Back in junior high where our school was so poor. You didn't have water? Well, we had like a PVC pipe that they... Stuck a hose into. Oh, yeah, they poke holes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I doubt they ever washed it or took care of it, so it would clog up, and we're like, I guess we're not drinking water today. It was terrible. So disgusting. <laughs> like the Junction Boys out here just raw-dogging it. 
The beard flies off with the weaponized star object and says that Riz is going to pay a nice price for it. And we cut to nighttime. Yeah, he expositions where he's going. Hello, exposition. Come on, man. They're trying to fix the bike. They're talking to each other in jargon through Pawnee. Just clip it. <laughs> My lady, the jackass wants a torque wrench. Honey, will you tell him that the sooner he restores power to my drive console, the sooner that I can figure out how to program it? My lady says you're a cloth-brained ass clown whose gullible idiocy has threatened the very existence of the planet. Okay, you know what? She she didn't say that, all right? You little worst piece in the chessboard. She said it. Didn't say any of it. Oh! Yeah, but I was thinking it. Actually, every single word. You make a really good point. Thank you. Did you tell your lady she now has power? Uh, the jackass says, my lady, that you have power. Can you thank him? Really? But in a cold, kind of polite way, you can even put a glare on it. Just play around with it. I trust you. My lady says, thank you. Ugh. Thor knows where the weapon's going. Riza Stavros. How are there 40 minutes left in this movie? I've been watching it for 13 hours. Man. I had started the night before. I was still watching midday next day. I made the mistake of watching this the first time to get caught up, started taking notes. I'd stopped taking notes just to finish the movie, just to relax. That's a good way to relax. <laughs> well, I was like, I just don't want to think about how to add commentary to this shit. Yeah. And then I was like, I got to watch it again to refresh my memory. No. I got more pissed <gasps> oh, no. on a second watch. So I'm like, oh, this is so long. <laughs> so long. Pawnee yeah. jumps in. You dated Riza Stavros, the merchant of death? The mother of murder? The Count of Montefisto? Same note, too. She's pretty hot. You didn't know she was an arms dealer when they met. Distracted by her feminine wiles and intoxicating beauty. Interested in hearts, not labels. Future callback, arms dealer. Ah. Nice. That's a good quality amino acid note right there. <laughs> Age says that M has never been in love. He's not making fun of her. Genuinely asking, never abandoned logic for passion. What is this? The sequel to The Notebook? I never saw it, but I assume it's a lot of this type of nonsense. Reference. She is not. She says passion is unstable and logic is constant. Physical attraction is nothing more than chemical reactions in your brain. I wouldn't say it's in your brain, folks. <laughs> Can't trust them. They're not real. Isn't the whole universe a chemical reaction? Pretty sure I can trust that. Feels pretty real. That's actually kind of deep. All right, everything's fixed. The bike works. She's pleased with herself. H says Riza has one weakness. They're going to Naples. There's a weird thing where Pawnee tries to jump into Tessa's pants pocket, and she says, not there. <laughs> That's as high as I could jump. Actually, I could jump higher, but that would have been more awkward. Yeah, is Pawnee trying to fuck Molly? I think he tried to jump into her vagina right there. Is he trying to do, like, what's that character from The Boys? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fake Ant-Man? <laughs> Oh, most definitely. <laughs> to the fortress of for sure death. Sure enough, there's the location caption. Riz's fortified fortress of for sure death. I smiled. Let me say this. Chris Hemsworth looks good on a speedboat. And wearing pastels. Pastels, speedboat, Naples. That's a good look for him. Hey, but they're going to the White Lotus. Yep. <laughs> Scanners and beams all over him. He waves a white hanky. Don't shoot. Riz has got a gun on someone, apologized to the guy, asked if they can do this another day. Ha <laughs> She has a visitor, and she shoots the guy as he leaves. She's wearing a striped sea wig. Guards bring them into the fortress. There's a big blue alien named Luca Brazzi. It's when I say, for fuck's sake. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Gotta be fucking kidding me. I wonder if this guy looks like another character we've met in this movie. Cue the Leo DiCaprio meme. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> I love that shit, man. <laughs> Telegraphed it like Kirk Cousins throwing a big pass right to the defense. That's what that is. Just oh, a hack. Man. Zach, I believe they telegraphed it like a telegraph. <laughs> 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 He's talking to Luca. A tough thing about breakups is the friendships you lose. We had some good times, didn't we? Actually, Riza and I had some good times while you lurked in the background like Cuck O'Leary. Question. Do you guys keep friendships after a breakup? No. No, 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 no. And I'm not talking about friendship with the person, like the friends. Oh, with their, fr oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the only fantasy football league I'm in <laughs> is with friends from Minneapolis. Yeah, that were all her friends. Oh, wow. Uh, Maze? I mean, if it's their friend that I met through them, it's much less likely. I can't think of many people that I'm still friends with that were my ex-girlfriend's friends first. Marshall? On that line, if I met them through them and it's an intimate friendship, I'm not pursuing that. 
But if we met together or if we met in a common group, yeah, for sure. I kind of let the friends establish that, by the way. Yeah. Afterwards. Like, if they're keeping up, then I'm like, all right, cool. Well, if it's you, your friends break up. Do you pick a side? Oh, like I'm friends with the two people dating? I'm friends with a couple. They break up. No, that's on them to figure out. Yeah, you're not going to tell me who to be friends with. Either way, Zach's passing the buck. <laughs> I'm not setting the tone for any of that shit. That's too much energy. Come on. I got other shit to watch. I got movies to watch. I can't do this. I got to watch Men in Black International again. <laughs> it's still not over. If I hated one of the friends, I'd make them watch this movie. Yes, or Cats. Cats. We find out that she's got a third arm. As he grabs her hands and a third one punches him. Keep your third arm open. Having a third arm coming out of the middle of your back has to be the least efficient way to have a third arm, right? I was having a lot of trouble figuring out how the joint on that thing worked. I think it's great for like, you got a lot of groceries to carry in, some kind of construction work or like putting something together. Fantastic. What's the character from Mortal Kombat? Goro. Yeah. At least go beat some people up. The sides. Yeah, the sides. Now you got some versatility. Out the middle of your back? You're just a radioactive baby. Like, what? <laughs> Probably the fish from The Simpsons, right? With the three eyes. Blinky. She says, MIB finally showed you the door. He showed himself out, actually. Some horses are born to roam free. And others just get shot. Verbal quicksand. She wants to know why he's there. He brought her something. It's Pawnee. He's making bad animal noises. He's cute in an ugly sort of way. They're flirting. M's climbing up the rock wall. Gagging as she listens to the flirting. Rizzo wants to know the truth. Were they ever real? He says, I knew who you were from the start. His job was to gain her trust and take her down. I know she's supposed to be like an alien being, but her hair is so distracting. <laughs> what is the hair? <laughs> it is. I don't like when the aliens are too human right. in these movies. No, Zach, she has a third arm that comes out of her back. <laughs> Total idiot. Mandor's got a digitally removed beard. That's what makes him an alien. You two are the biggest bingos in the world. <laughs> she thanks him for giving her closure and says to get him out of there. Next time he comes to make a peace offering, don't make it the same day she comes into possession of the most powerful weapon ever created. Most notorious MacGuffin in New York City. <laughs> he knocks the guards <laughs> off the dock. He runs back in. He's killed these henchmen. They're going to drown. If he punched them hard enough where they can't come back out and attack him again, that means they're unconscious and they fell in the water. Yeah, and they've got water in their lungs. They're going to die. They're going to drown. Okay. Body count. Yeah. Riz is making calls about the weapon. H turns off the defense system of the fortress. Pawnee cuts out of his own container, and as he gets out, it breaks, and she sees him running away, and she's fascinated by his little run. Oh, look at your little legs. You are so fast. M sneaks in. She grabs the object, but as she's walking out, Rizzo walks in and sees her. Oh, hello. Oh, and here I thought. H walked alone. Silly me. Poor you. It's been a steep learning curve. Yeah. Oh, that. That's a snub nose casting annihilator. Do you know what that does to a human body? Boils you from the inside out. Cute. Do you know what a Pawnee does to sadistic alien arms dealers? No, honey, tell me what a Pawnee is. I'm a Pawnee, you psycho! Pawnee grapples the gun and yanks it out of her hand. M starts running. Riza dives and spinning thwacks M with two of the three arms, and she fumbles the MacGuffin. Thor turns around, gets thrown by Luca. We got simultaneous fighting. Riza is dominating with her extra arm. She chokes her. Ah, oh, H grabs a tiny hammer. The Avengers theme plays. Thor. Looks like the turntables have turned. He throws the hammer at him and he catches it. That was an incredible catch. I laughed. Really? That got you, huh? Oh my God. I laughed that that was an incredible catch. Snapped you out of your stupor at 6.30 in the morning. That's the part. <laughs> Jesus. What do you want from me? <laughs> Decided to take notes again for that. <laughs> I did. I actually wrote it down. Yeah. M ties the third arm to a bell. It traps Riza. We see her get knocked out. Luca carries in H. M gives up the weapon. Riza says to kill them. Start with H. Make it hurt. M says they don't have to do this. Or calls Luca a Tarantian thug. Did you say Tarantian? Film noir. Pawnee expositions, they tend to be single-minded. Brains the side of a pistachio nut flashback when she was a kid with the creature she says they met once she repeats the words that it said cobbler nuxual in molly rizza can't believe it rizza says are you shitting me and i said same note too for rizza maze also i need you to clip this from role models 
when they're at the campfire. Standing there with the moon at his back and holding the severed head of the pediatrician's mother in his hand was Philip, the pizza delivery boy from when they ordered pizza at the beginning of the story. Come on, you guys. All right, whatever. You guys are unscarable. All right, Luca turns the gun on Riza. Says, give her the box. Luca, you can't do this. Haven't I been good to you? I let you kill anyone you wanted. Come on. Come on. She tosses M the box. M thanks him. Wants to know what the Kabla Nakshulin means. One day I will kill whoever you choose in the most gruesome way imaginable. <laughs> One day I will carry out perfect exposition for the thing that you need to have happen in this movie. So the baby version of him recognize that eventually I'm going to commit murder on your behalf. Yes. Yeah. So that's what the kids are brought up as. <laughs> what? Yep. That's how they do. H is not supposed to know that it's Molly instead of M too late. She doesn't want to know his Horatio. She says it is not. It's not. It's Henry. Bonnie calls himself Steve. He was feeling left out. Ugh. Fortress <laughs> Island starting to break apart. Leaves him on a narrow rock formation. It's twins. Galaxy brain. We must have the weapon for the hive. I don't know if you've heard, but we are the men in black. The men and women in black. Jeez. Turns back and gives a thumbs up. <laughs> 21st century, ma'am. Uh. Twins don't know what they're dealing with. She activates the weapon, says move, and I'll obliterate this entire island and everything on it. Says, yeah, including us. Don't you think we should have spoken about this? I just gave a whole speech. I like the speech. Just thought of this would be more effective. Says, we'll do anything to protect our world. And the twins say, so will we. After a long pause. What? Fucking moment of silence. All of a sudden, agents fire on the twins, take them down. Liam says, nothing in this universe is unkillable with the proper voltage. There you go. Found them with experience. Teases Thor about Riza. When are you going to learn? Universe has a way of leading you to where you're supposed to be. H finishes it at the moment you're supposed to be there. 25 minutes left in this movie. Huh. Whole agency applauds them. Liam says to keep the weapon safe. Inform the Jababian embassy that they have the weapon. I noticed in this scene where everyone's applauding, not too many black MIBs. <laughs> MIWs. Very it's not the BIB. <laughs> <laughs> what would that stand for, Maze? What do you mean? <laughs> it? It's January. You could say it. Oh, okay. I still got a couple more days. <laughs> okay. This is so forced. We've been shitting on the writing. Oh, this is the part that's forced. Yeah. This is the worst writing ever. Because they both simultaneously think something's off. What if they misunderstood, Lit Twins? Yeah. Maybe they needed the weapon against the Hive to save their world, which means they were never the Hive at all. But the mutations... The forensic report has been deleted. Who has the authority to make a case file disappear? Aha! Uh huh. M wonders how Liam knew about Naples. Does his job include tracking us? And then she pulls out the compass she got at the beginning of the movie and hasn't touched since. Oh! It has a chip inside it. It was Alex, the pizza delivery guy, <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> He's back. Amin is back, folks. This is the most Scooby Doo ass shit I've ever seen. Oh my God! <laughs> It is. Oh. Fucking Agent Velma. They are figuring everything out in a hurry <laughs> with absolutely no action dictating it. It's all exposition, folks. The weapon is not in evidence. M thinks high T is the mole. A mole for who? So he steps up and says Paris. Yeah, he just joins in because he figured it out at the same time, too. H is worried that if it gets out that T is a traitor, the agency will never recover. They need to stop him without anybody knowing. What? The secret agency, the super secret agency that nobody knows about. This is very government. Needs to worry about the PR. I mean, I mean, this crack agency made Will Smith go through the ringer and they have dumbasses walking through it. A and C was right in front of. Unbelievable. Yep. See? Can't keep a brother down. <laughs> Says, tell them I was the traitor. Trust me, the agency will believe you. It's the shittiest Batman Dark Knight ripoff. Yeah. They go to the parking garage. The total Jaguar is somehow parked there. Oh, that's right. That happened. And now they get a brand new MIB Lexus. Ugh. Zach, you wanted to know how there are still 22 minutes left in this movie? Well, 20 of them are a Lexus commercial. Yep, it sure is. Oh, my God. Lex position. It's shot like a commercial. It is. Where every time they shift on the paddles, it's a close-up. The zoom in on the push to start. 
Everything about it, this is how commercials look. They don't even try to place the product. All they're missing is the red ribbon from the Christmas commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just parked in the driveway. Yeah. The family comes out of like this amazing house. <laughs> That's a wild gift idea, by the way. Just like, oh, yeah, here's a car payment. <laughs> Oh, you got them inheriting the bill with it? Yes, absolutely. Merry Christmas. Got this for you. Merry Christmas. It's three ninety a month. All right. We get a joke about her getting on the wrong side when she wanted to drive to get to the streets. Big red button, blah, blah, blah. Potty gets excited. She pushes the button. There's a delay, and then they fly away in Farva's $10 million car. Potty gets pressed up on the glass like Marlon Wayans. <laughs> Agency lets them know the portal in Sector C has been activated. Full circle. Remember when I told you we're in the line business? That's what T said when he recruited me. He said, we have to lie to the world, which means we can never lie to each other. An honest man in black. <laughs> H says again that they save the world together with nothing but their wits and their Series 7 de-atomizer. They slide into Paris. Same exact drift under the Eiffel Tower, buttoning their suits. Big blue beam coming out of the tip. <laughs> like the beam. Yeah. Keep saying, nothing but our wits and our Series 7 deatomizers. Yes, but how do you do it? Nothing but our wits and our Series 7 deatomizers. She thinks he was neuralized that night. Liam is on a platform above them. His ass is gone. <laughs> Absolutely gone. Why are they in Ninja Turtle headquarters at the subway oh, right now? Oh, man, it's fantastic. I love this setting. Same note, too. You can really feel the history here. Eiffel discovering wormholes, gangways to other civilizations, the first alien migration, down to a coin flip. Phoenix calls heads. Yes, it was tails. <laughs> and the goddamn Bucks got Lou Alcindor. Just our wits and the continuum transfunctioner. I haven't watched basketball since. <laughs> no, we didn't. The Hive wanted the most powerful weapon in the galaxy, so you had Vungus bring it to Men in Black. Says, My dear boy, you were always a bright one, but there is no stopping this. He activates the portal. The weapon out of the way. Every planet will fall, starting with this one. It's just one of those days. My question, never understood this. If the goal is to destroy all planets, then what? Right. Then what do you do? <laughs> You just float out there? Like fucking Sandra Bullock? What's the end game? Okay, now everyone's Kill. dead. What is fucking Spence from Ballers? Who cares what the end game is? What is the end game here, though, Spence? T says they wanted the weapon. I wanted this. You were there. You were always like a son to me. Hobby talk. Hey? You were always like a son to me. That's not IT anymore. You were always like a son. To him, not the whole thing voice comes out. Not the whole thing. Grabs H's hands, tentacles come out, grab him. Liam transforms into a hive alien, knocks him down, knocks down M when she tries to shoot. Massive Cthulhu alien fumbles the MacGuffin mm. when Thor jumps on his back. Strip sack, toss them both aside, <laughs> grabs the weapon, says he knows how to get it back and that Liam is still in there somewhere, walks up to him. Hey, I know you're in there somewhere. And it grabs his throat. It's me, H. Remember, you wanted me to take your place. We get a flashback Bukaki yeah. thrown at us. She's falling into the portal. Pawnee is using his little jetpack. My queen. She wants to know how the universe works. Liam's saying the universe leads you where you're supposed to be. And H finish insane. Pawnee pulls her back to earth. Two grappling hooks. Thor brings up poppy talk. You said I was like a son to you. You were like a father to me. Pop! The alien's eyes go back to Liam's. Those eyes ass off. Ooh, yes. Liam's eyes are fantastic <laughs> in this scene, man. These eyes are <laughs> crying. These eyes are seen a lot of love. But they're never gonna see a lot of love with you. He releases the weapon to H. What are you singing? These eyes. Oh, crying. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never going to see another love like I had with you. You haven't heard that song. You've never seen Superbad? We've done this before. Uh, I, I was about to say, it's sad. this whole thing God, feels it. very familiar. Yep. Yeah. yep, 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 yep. Big Hive tentacle grabs Cthulhu. Molly turns the MacGuffin into a weapon. Right time, right place. She blows up Cthulhu, zaps the entire hive. It cries? Blows up into light, but doesn't cause any damage to anything and disintegrates. Do you guys find it a little bit awkward that the life lesson that she learned from what is ultimately the villain is what ends up being the thing that saves the day? She didn't say that talking shit like using his line back to him. She said that like she was actually inspired 
by that line about being the right place at the right time. Maybe she's using it as H inspired her and not Liam. But H never says that shit. High T says it before he becomes the Hive, though, so he's not a bad guy when he says it. Have you ever hated a movie so much that you're rooting for the villains to just fuck everything up? Dude. To end the franchise? <laughs> yes. Yeah, if they had ended the Men in Black here, just let the Hive take over it. Who cares? Let him have it. Here's the thing. It did end the franchise. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Agent O shows up. She's no longer probationary. H is probationary as the head of the London Bureau. Ah, uh, probationary head. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Sounds like I got promoted and demoted at the same time. I don't know if I'm coming or going. Uh, she says that T told her long ago about his leadership quality. She has full support of the senior staff in Agent C. H accepts. It's an H job now. <laughs> M is headed to MIB New York. O and M walk away. Congratulations, Proby. So you wanted to know how it all works. Now you do. And I just wrote lines like these, man. Oh. M's in the driver's seat because she really needs to drive that Lexus. She told O she had to take care of a couple things before she leaves. They're going on a road trip. H sat on Pawnee. He's H's new babysitter. Banter. They take off. She drives trusting her gut. And we get a Back to the Future ripoff shot. Yep. Oh, same note, too. Back to the Future, too. Roll credits. The sequel, not as well. So I thought that I had remembered two things from this movie. One was the fight in the street when they kill Vungus. And two, I was certain that at the end of this movie, the Eiffel Tower is the Neuralizer. And neuralizes the entire planet. Oh. Yeah, it neuralizes everybody. Am I tripping? Is that from a different MIB movie? Is that from MIB 3 or MIB 2 or something like that? I think it's from an earlier one. But now I'm having that moment, you know. Mandela effect? What is it? The Manchurian? Or the Mandela effect, yeah. Manchurian. <laughs> the Mandela effect where we all thought Sinbad was a genie. He wasn't a genie? No. There's never been in a movie where he's a genie. But we've all had that shot of him in the poster, right? Of him dressed as a genie. Oh. Uh. Okay. That's not a real thing. Manchurian effect. The Manzukis effect. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares if you lose the game? You got this off your chest. I mean, it's just one night of bar trivia. Ooh. One night of bar trivia is sacrosanct us. Trivia is sacrosanct. Oh, fuck's sake. I got some deleted scenes before we get into the trivia. You took notes on those. Yes, I did. <laughs> Most of them are terrible, like the twins walking up to a stuffed dog outside the shop in the band to see the queen before they do that to the shopkeeper. Mm. The dancing scene is a little bit longer. There's a point where she's trying to get H's attention, like, look over there. And he looks at them dancing, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? And then he tries to do the dance, too. Some mixer where Pawnee's telling a story about Millie Vanilli. Uh, but there are two scenes where I thought, this is actually pretty funny. One is, after he has sex with the alien, he gets up, goes to the mirror, and writes on the mirror, whatever you do, do not turn around. Just get out of here and leave. And then he neuralizes himself to forget about sleeping with her. I thought that was funny. How do you think that Squidessy was? Look, man, I don't think you want that ink shooting out. I'll just say that. Squidessy is quite the word. <laughs> and then the other is when they're on the train, she asks him how he got into MIB. He stole a vintage Jag. He was trying to hotwire it. He looks in the back seat. There's some weird alien the alien is about to kill High T. He then saves him and kills the alien. High T is about to neuralize him and he says, I don't know where you're from, mate, but where I'm from, someone does you a solid like that, the least you could do is get him a pint. So they basically got drunk and by the end of it, High T was like, you want to be a man in black? I like the origin story. I don't know. No. Jeez. No? Absolutely not. <laughs> Those are two of the best scenes in the movie. What? Compared to the movie? Are you shocked about this? I would like to apologize, but I'm not even going to apologize because there's no way <laughs> I could have predicted this. There's just not any way. I've seen it, and I didn't remember how bad it was. But that's the other thing. We got tricked because Thor Ragnarok was good between them two. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, for sure this will be somewhat decent, right? Ugh. It's funny you should mention that because one of the reasons they cast these two was because of their chemistry in Thor Ragnarok and they were trying to recapture it. They left it in whatever fuck planet is Thor's from. I don't know where he's from. Valhalla? Is that what it is? Asgard. Whatever. Whatever. Nerds. Frank the Pug and the Worm guys are the only characters from Men in Black or Men in Black 2 to physically appear in this one. Although they have a prominent place on the movie's poster, they have less than a minute of screen time. Nostalgia. Marketing. Less than a minute? It was less than that? I would say 30 seconds, tops. Which is less than a minute. There is a secret apartment at the top of the <laughs> Eiffel Tower where Gustav Eiffel entertained famous guests like Thomas Edison. It's a fuckhouse, I'm telling you. <laughs> 
you don't build a secret apartment on <laughs> top of the Eiffel Tower to not no. lay eyes wide shut. Yeah, that's uh Honey, I'm going to work again. <laughs> oh, I need to make some repair on the tower. Tessa Thompson loved the character of Pawnee so much and knew that Kumail Nanjiani would be perfect for the role. Although his character is all CGI, look at me, look, excuse me, Nanjiani flew out to London wow. so he could read with Thompson and Chris Hemsworth in person, making the character interactions feel more dynamic. Ugh. All of them, take them all away. Chris Hemsworth was very impressed with Le Twin's dancing skills. <laughs> he oh says of them, there's something so impressive and also unnerving about the way they move in synchronicity. They're professional dancers. They even finish each other's <laughs> thoughts. Physically as well as verbally. It's amazing to watch. I'm really impressed with the way Jamal Crawford plays basketball. Yeah, no shit. That's his job. That's their job. Rip Torn, who played Zed in the first two movies and an alien at his character's funeral in the third movie, died a month after the release of this movie. I don't know about you guys. I'm connecting the dots here. Mm -hmm. Rip, rip. The high and high tea refers to the height of the table on which it is served. Afternoon tea is a tradition that many upper class English people enjoy, and it consists of tea served with small cakes and snacks at around four in the afternoon because many working class people were unable to take a break for tea at four they would instead wait to have tea after work and serve it with a heartier meal this tea was served on a high table with high back chairs as opposed to a low table similar to a coffee table on which afternoon tea is served so it's poor people tea uh, i could have done without ever learning that <laughs> Hold on, let me get my neuralizer out. God, I hope so. The character of Luca Brasi is the same name as the murderer for hire in The Godfather. We all kind of knew that. There were talks of a 23 Jump Street slash Men in Black crossover movie, which was revealed when emails were leaked in the Sony hack of December 2014. Phil Lord and Chris Miller were developing the idea. Here's an excerpt from the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast with Josh Horowitz last year where they talked about it. One of my favorite ideas is that the men in black, like the black suits were like um, martial arts belts that you had to work your way up to black and that they were they were issued powder blues <laughs> men in black suits. It was basically the idea was that Joan and Channing, a thing happened while they were doing their medical school adventure that got them embroiled into the world of men in black. And they ended up sort of like teaming up to sort of stop uh, an alien uh, takeover type of thing. So got it. it was, it was very funny. It was very crazy <laughs> trying to sort of like manage these two franchises and not drive them both into the ground seem like a, a real <laughs> seemed like a real challenge as long as it's jonah hill channing tatum and ice cube in it i'm in for any dumb crossover idea they do jonah hill said it's too complicated they're trying to make all the deals but it's kind of impossible with all the men in black stuff the jump street films are so fun to make and the whole joke of them was they were making fun of remakes and sequels and reboots and then now it's become a giant sequel reboot it's almost become what we were making fun of, and it's hard to maintain that joke when it's so high stakes. He gets it. The sunglasses that the agents wore in this movie were an exclusive design by police, a lifestyle brand for the Derigo group. Should have been Oakley's. I'd like you all to do an experiment on a plant, something that uh, may benefit mankind. And if you had devised something that's groundbreaking, I guarantee you a A in this course. Oh, well, oh, hold on, man. You firing me? You can't, you can't do that, Lionel. Look, man, if you, if you don't want me to have a foreman job, I understand, but I need my fucking job, man. Lewis Pinnock Accent Award. I had Kayvon Novak, a.k.a. Nandor, because he was the voice of Vungus. Yeah. To Baby and Clowny. He was also the mocap for that as well, as I learned from the deleted scenes. And the beard. He did triple duty in this movie. Did he really? Oh, man. Let's well, show him who the horsemen are, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got soul. Five horsemen, loaded field here. Exposition, chock full of it everywhere you look. Alien jargon. Yeah, a lot of that. Big time jargon movie. And this is a huge MacGuffin movie. I would also add product placement. Mm. Product placement. While not a lot, it came in super aggressive in a way that we've never seen before. Yeah. And never seen since. Well, don't forget that's my boy. 
Oh, that's true, yeah. Which one had the Dunkachino? That's Jack and Jill. Oh, Jack and Jill's what I meant. Not That's my boy, Jack and Jill, yeah. I was ready to believe you. <laughs> the other one that they have a ton of is what we call the opposite of banter. Verbal, verbal quicksand. quicksand. Yeah. <laughs> verbal quicksand. I would say verbal quicksand because it sucks the life out of this movie. This actually could have been, even with the bad story and everything, this could have been a good, fun movie. Yeah. If there's good banter. You know what it made me think of is all this new chat AI stuff. It's like if you asked AI to make what you thought was funny banter and then it just wrote the script for it. Hey, chat AI, make a Men in Black script for me. <laughs> it would be better than this. Don't play this on algorithm. <laughs> Algae rhythm. You know what? Another horseman for you. 21st century, ma'am. Oh, yeah. I'm going verbal quick soon. Marshall? It just slowed the movie down too much. I couldn't get from scene to scene because they're just talking nonsense. It's crazy. And they're talking so much. So much. Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. That's on. on. That's off. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Teddy Rex, Moosey Teddy Rex. Ass on. Fuck it, ass off. Ass on. Fuck it, ass off. Michael Bean Memorial Ass On Award. Literally, take your pick. Oh, you know who it is for me. You're going with Kumail, I'm guessing. Oh, shit. Or are you going with Tessa Thompson? Who do you hate more? Oh. You can't go with Kumail for voice acting. <laughs> he wasn't bad as a voice actor. You just don't like him. No, he was bad. He was bad. No, he wasn't. He, was, he played the character well. No, the character was supposed to be funny. You thought that was funny? No, I'm saying for what it was. No. He did his job. No, 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 no. You've gone too far. No, no, no. No, it's Tessa. So you're giving it to a woman again. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to give it to her, too. She's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's really bad. I'm giving it to Janelle Monae, too. <laughs> Fuck you. You can't yeah, act. you know what? Ah, they both get it. <laughs> Janelle Monae and Tessa Thompson. You got me hating someone I've never even thought I would hate before, so. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Weathers Memorial Ass Off Award. Oh, you know where this is going. It's easy. I liked Rebecca Ferguson as Riza Stavros. I thought she was good. She was the only person who looked like she was having a good time in this movie. You guys want to say it all at once? On three? One, two... Three, the twins agent. I mean, it's Liam Neeson. Even the eyes when he's the alien and they and it goes back to Liam's eyes. Do you think at any point he understood how poorly this movie is written? He's like, this is beneath me. I think he looks at that as summer home. <laughs> this buys a summer home. Lenore. Lenore. <laughs> how many summer homes does he have? Aren't they all summer homes? No, nah, man. Some of this is just for the action of it, for the thrill. Getting his kicks, literally. Well, he doesn't kick. He just punches people. Never mind. A lot of hand-to-hand, -hand, yeah. All right, Marshall, what's your ass off? Is there anything redemptive in this movie? No, nah, I mean, Liam saves it because he's himself, but he can't do all the work. It's crazy. Yeah. I expect him to make the same type of movie, and I'll be fine with it. And that's why I screwed up in picking this now. I'll admit that. But <laughs> he couldn't save this. It's crazy. It's the sacrifices you make for pod life, you know? That's just what it is. Are you good at keeping secrets? Absolutely. Because I've got a, a present for you. Secret present outside by the dumpster. Is it a baseball mitt? To fit you like a baseball mitt, like a glove, I hope. Golden Dumpster nominees. I have nothing, no dog, no cat, definitely no chill. Nandor's digitally removed beard. And what is this? The sequel to The Notebook? I never saw it, but I assume it's a lot of this type of nonsense. I'm going with Nandor's digitally removed beard because that shit is disturbing. I got some other nominees for you. H saying you should have seen the mess I had to clean up this morning. The whole poppy talk interaction between him and C. Don't be a dick. Who says Farago? Martin from Role Models. <laughs> Reminding us that it was the guy from the beginning of the story. <laughs> That's not from this movie. That's uh, Sorry. <laughs> and then I got my answer, which is H, 12 o'clock. You're damn right it is. Night is young. I'm going to go with what I thought was in the movie is the Eiffel Tower being a giant neuralizer. I'm going with that. Well, no, hold on. If he's going to go with that, then I'm going with Martin from Role Models. <laughs> We're just adding stuff not in the movie. Okay. That's how much they liked it. Their favorite things are things that weren't in it. Marsha, do you have a golden dumpster from this movie or any other movie you've watched in the past? <laughs> when I physically cringe at dialogue, when she said no chill, that's just got to be. Oh, my God. And then all the times that they made women in black inferences and stuff. It's the inclusion for me. Marshall, you picked it, motherfucker. Motherfucker. I like that. Bober file. Oh, man, it's a tough decision. I've been weighing it this entire time. Not sure which way I'm going to go. <laughs> it's just the hardest, most direct phobe in the history of this podcast. <laughs> just awful shit. They phoned it in. 
they insulted all of us and they sold some Lexuses, some Lexi. We're all the worst for it. Maze? I nearly walked away when she said, I have nothing, no dog, no cat, definitely no chill. We discussed how the attempted banter was so bad. It made this movie even longer than it was. So it was a brutal note-taking experience. At certain points, I was questioning how this concept could even be good in the first place. That's how bad it was. Mm-hmm. Well, they're just following the same kind of general script that they did in Men in Black. What made Men in Black good? Is it the fact that we're just living in a world where RIPD is ripped off Men in Black and now this movie's ripping off RIPD and it's all a big continuum? And it all comes down to the stars didn't have charisma, the script was awful, the plot was generic, nothing could save it. It's a phobe. I mean? So, Maze, you talked about ripping off RIPD. It reminds me of when Coca-Cola came out with New Coke. And New Coke, when you break down how they change the taste, basically, they try to make Pepsi. And Pepsi declared that as a victory for themselves. Coke basically changed from their formula to try to be more like them. I enjoyed RIPD. No, you didn't. I did not enjoy this movie. Actually, Zach, what's worse, this movie or RIPD? R.I.P.D. Come on, man. They had real banter. That's because Ryan Reynolds is in it. Okay. I'm indifferent to this movie. You're not indifferent to this. I'm angered to my core by (laughs) R.I.P.D. This movie is right up there for me with Cats and Jupiter Ascending. Don't worry, darling. And Hot Rod. Jack and Jill. That's my boy. Da Vinci Code. Good luck, Chuck. Master of Disguise. (laughs) You know what? No. Master of Disguise, not one of the worst. What? (laughs) Not compared to this shit. Not compared to this shit. Was it pistachio disguiser? <laughs> <laughs> this is a phobe for me, man. I can't stress this enough, man. What a boring fucking movie. Zach, you're indifferent, so should I just leave it blank? Or No, I can be indifferent about a movie and give it a phobe or a file. Oh, okay. You moron. This is a franchise I actually really like. That's the thing. It's a franchise that I think is actually a little slept on in terms of a trilogy. One and two are really good. I actually think three is a little underrated. This killed what should be a billion dollar franchise absolutely killed it i can't imagine how you can have less chemistry between two starring roles it's truly stunning it's a phobe we can sweep it on up make sure you're giving us your lewis pinnock award your five horsemen ass on ass off your golden dumpster your phobe or file at talk hoops at darthamine at corn puzzle at levitard show and m newhouse 73 Marshall, despite you really just fucking this up, we appreciate the time and we will have you back. We love that you love the show, that you want to be back. Marshall, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade. So, that's the end of Liam Neeson month. I mean, did you get the panel's opinion on who won the month? No, because there is no panel. What? In the words of Clubber Lang, I do not accept the challenge because there is no challenge. I didn't get the votes of the panel because there is no panel. The panel has been disbanded. Film noir? It's a clunky system. You don't like it? Don't like it. Stugatz never knew what the fuck I was talking about. He would just... Pick randomly. He picked a movie he'd never seen. Juju, I think, still harbors ill will towards Anthony Mays. Mm -hmm. It's true. But he did vote me to win once, though. Roy was the only one who I think actually had the... Roy's a proper ombudsman for Cinephobe. Yeah, but it wasn't doing the trick. And, you know, we've been doing the themes now for two years, right? Yeah. It started with Nick Cage month in January 2021. And it ended now with Liam Neeson month in January 2023. So I propose a new system. Yeah? What's that? The hell is this? The daisy chain. (laughs) That is a sexual term, my friend. No, it's not. No, it's not. It feels like one, though. It sounds like a sex term. Why does that sound sexual? I know this doesn't make sense when I say it out loud, okay? For some reason, it sounds like scissoring to me. You don't get that feeling? If anything, it would be like the elephant walk. Or like a human centipede. But whatever. Sexual is sexual. No, I don't get those images, Zach, because I have a healthy relationship with sex. I promise you don't. (laughs) (laughs) You've told a lot of lies on this podcast. (laughs) 
<laughs> but that's the biggest one. I didn't lie, Annie. I just didn't tell you certain things. <laughs> so the way the daisy chain works is whatever movie we just did, you got to pick someone who is in this movie to be in the next movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, this sounds like an idea I had once upon a time, which was a repeat offender month. Yeah, but I think we need to put a cap on this. I think we shouldn't do more than back to back. Yeah. Of a person that we're linking it to. Can't go three in a row. Starting now. Liam Neeson doesn't get affected by this. No. And to be honest with you, I'm not worried about it because I'm not picking a Liam Neeson movie. What? Oh, well, there you go. Because even though we're doing away with the theme months, it is still February. It is still Black History Month. Mm. All the rules still apply. All of them? All the rules of Black History Month still apply. Excuse me, Black Heritage Month. Ah. Shout out to two years ago when someone corrected us. So I needed a black movie. And so I went with Tessa Thompson as the only black person with a speaking role. Sorry, Liz Twins. You guys don't fucking count. <laughs> also, we've already done Cats. So their catalog is wiped out. They're out. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to go with the 2010 movie starring Tessa Thompson, Janet Jackson. Tandy Newton, Loretta Devine, Kerry Washington, Kimberly Lees, Whoopi Goldberg, Felicia Rashad, Macy Gray, Michael Ely, Omari Hardwick, Hill Harper, Khalil Kane. Bill Harper? No, not your dad. <laughs> That's right, boys. It's the cinephobe debut of Tyler Perry. What? With Tyler Perry's. For colored girls. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Oh God. So you can daisy chain off of a writer or director too, right? Yes. And then how far into the cast are we capping this? Whatever. No, 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 no. We're not doing the transportation department. Actual cast, even uncredited. No, you have to be credited. You should be able to know who they are in the movie at least. No. No, I'm putting my foot down right now. No, no. No stunts, no transportation department, but I'm saying cast credited uncredited it's all legal you can't go uncredited man because then we're gonna get coolio movies repeat offender well if it's coolio who got cut out of a director's cut i'm with that see i support that decision it will call it the coolio effect i just don't want to be doing literally the last person in the cast is a repeat offender i'll do anybody all right well now we've just put it in zach's brain so terrified to see where this goes yeah all right daisy chain tyler perry hot 